Thomas Paine, Thomas Paine, Thomas Paine, Sam Adams, Sam Adams, Sam Adams, Benjamin Franklin, Benjamin Franklin, Benjamin Franklin. These men spoke up for what they thought was right. From their courage came such documents as the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution of the United States. States. From their willingness to speak what was sometimes unpopular but right, we enjoy such liberties as freedom of speech, the right to keep and bear arms, and freedom of religion. There are those who still wish to oppress our freedoms, and there are still patriots willing to stand up and defend life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Men like Zeb Bell, who honor our founding fathers and what they stood for. It's now time for Zeb at the ranch, speaking up and defending your freedoms. Brought to you by Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers and all of the other great advertisers on the program. And now, Zeb Bell. I have the top ten reasons why redneck pickup trucks are never, hardly ever stolen. Here's two of them. They have a range of about 20 miles before they overheat, break down, or run out of gas. And number two, only the owner knows how to operate the door to get in or out. (laughs) Morning, everybody. Here comes Kate Smith and God Bless America, followed by a patriot with our Pledge of Allegiance on this July 10th. Good morning. And a good morning to you. Good morning, Magic Valley. Zeb at the Ranch. I'm Zeb Bell with our major sponsor, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations serving you, along with some of our great advertisers, including Western Way Services, always at your disposal. Call them 734-6969. Right now, here's a patriot with our Pledge of Allegiance. Good morning. Good morning. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, Thank you, Jerry. God bless you. Good to hear from you this morning, and thanks for calling in. Appreciate it. You have a wonderful morning. All your people out there in Radio Land, you have a wonderful morning. And may the Lord bless you all. All right, Jerry. I appreciate your call. Thank you, my dear friend. Good, good friend of this program. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Uh, Time for the weather. And the weather is brought to you by Roger and the crew over there at KNR Rental. 256 South, 600 West of Hayburn. Number to call, 678-3122. Don't worry. They're there. They open the doors at 7 o'clock this morning. Stay open until 530 this afternoon, Saturday, 7 to 2. They've got all the equipment, all all the tools, everything you need from forklifts to lawnmowers. I'm telling you what, they've got it all, and they are a Honda engine dealer for all the parts that you might need for your wheel lines at K&R Rental in Hayburn. Right now, here's Gina with the weather. It's going to be another warm one as we kick off another work week. Plus, we are in a red flag warning. That means no burning, as we do have tender dry conditions out there today. Looking at sunny skies, high of 92. We do have a slight chance of some afternoon rain, showers, or thunderstorms. Winds out of the west right around 10 to 25 miles an hour for tonight. Looking at clear skies, low 56 tomorrow. Sunny skies, cooling off to 89, if you consider that a cool off, looking at an overnight low of 55. Then for Wednesday, sunny skies in 92. That's your weather for Zebeth Ray. I appreciate it. A business that's been in business since 1979, K&R Rental. At 256 South, 600 West of Hayburn, number to call for all your tools and equipment, 678-3122. Remember, K&R Rental. Friday morning... We were getting set to go to a board of directors meeting for the Idaho Rodeo Hall of Fame. And a good friend of this program and a really nice man, Earl Worthen, stopped in and gave Deanna and I a leg of lamb. And we're going to put that on the barbie and have a great dinner out of it. And thank you, Earl. What a nice, nice person to come all the way down here and say hello. And I felt so bad because we were running a little bit late and we had to get out of here. And uh, I just felt bad. I wanted to sit and visit with him for a while. Nice person. 
Hey, don't forget Daryl's Cleaners, and uh, they're doing all they can to help you, and make sure you got a little extra time for the things you want to do. They will take care of your washing of your clothes. You didn't know that? Well, you do now, because they will dry, fold, wash, I better start in the right order, wash, dry, fold, <laughs> and iron all your clothes, and they'll make them look brand spanking new. And remember to bring your jeans in and have them dry cleaned. We'll not shrink or fade in color. Keep some looking good. That's where I've been taking my Wranglers for a long, long time. Daryl's Cleaners, 1223 Albion Avenue in Burley. You stop in and see those good folks today. Really, really sharp people. By the way, I want to talk to you also about somebody that's been on this program for a long time, years and years, ever since the beginning, and I really appreciate them. And that's Ramsey Heating and Electric at 2600 Overland Avenue in Burley. All your heating, cooling, electrical needs, it's all there. And I'll bet you, you took my advice last week, didn't you? You stopped in and got your air conditioning filters. And whoa, baby, <laughs> we had some sweaty days and more to come. 2600 Overland Avenue in Burley. The number to call six seven eight zero four five nine. They're open seven thirty to five Monday through Friday. All your heating, cooling, and electrical needs. Ramsey Heating and Electric. Wow, it was warm. And yesterday, kind of a funny deal. You know, we had uh, the family over here, and we had friends, uh, Sean and Kent, and uh, let's see who else is here. Dave, we had a whole driveway full of trailers here. And about 630 we said, yeah, well, let's rope. It kind of cooled off a little bit. <laughs> well, then it, it, we roped in the rain last night. I don't know how many of you got rain and how long it lasted, but it absolutely lasted here. Just kind of a light little sprinkle and drizzle and everything for about maybe 30 minutes, 35 minutes, and uh, kind of cooled things off, and a lot of people drove by real slow, and we're out there roping in the rain, and they looked at us like, boy, are you guys nuts. I got to tell you, that's the most comfortable that I'd been in the last week. I mean, with a kind of a wet, soggy shirt, felt good. A little cooling breeze. It wasn't that bad out there. Calls welcome 436 2244 1 866 927 4587. Come on, give me a call to start things off this morning. I want to remind you about Denny's restaurant. Oh my goodness sakes, all those different burgers like the honey jalapeno bacon sriracha burger. Don't ask me to do that again because I can't. And the bacon Gouda burger or the bacon avocado cheeseburger. Oh, they got a list of new burgers. Absolutely phenomenal. Absolutely. You stop in at Denny's Restaurant. It is America's Diner at 611 Overland and Burley and 291 Poline Road in Twin Falls. And our next lunch bunch is going to be next week. Don't mistake it and say I said this week. No, it's next week on the 20th. Don't forget that. Denny's Restaurant, America's Diner. Oh, i got to try that one more time. The Honey Jalapeno Bacon Sriracha Burger. Oh, my, it's good. Good morning, caller. You're on the air. Good morning, Lawson. Yes, sir. You know, I'd just like to bring up something that maybe a lot of, uh, especially elderly people, are not aware of. And that is, on TV lately, they've been running these commercials for warranties on your household appliances and stuff. And I want people to know that this is probably one of the biggest rip-offs you can have. Mm -hmm. Because... They don't disclose to you that it is a high deductible. And also, your homeowner's insurance, who usually is a replacement insurance, that is not. In other words, if you wanted to have your air conditioner uh, replaced, you would be only given the money that it takes right. to buy one of them used. Right, right. Right. It is not a replacement. You know, and... Like people 
to be aware of that. Yeah, hang on just a second, Keith. I want to tell the other caller to stay on the air. I'll be with him in just a second. You know, all these warranties, and we get these notifications in the mail that look so sincere and honest about, oh, your vehicle warranty is about up. You better contact us right away. I wouldn't contact those people if they were the last phone call on earth. I am not about to go into debt or add more money to a monthly payment to something I find ridiculous. Well... Having been in the car business for all those years, sometimes a warranty is a good thing if you have a good company. Because if you're in a position where you cannot put out twenty three, twenty four hundred dollars for a, a transmission fix, you know, and they add that into your payment when you buy it, it's 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 not a necessary thing. But if your car breaks down and you don't have any money. What do you do? Yeah, but wait a minute, Keith. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You know as well as I do, a lot of these hokey pokey warranty companies, they'll have so many restrictions and so many clauses and so many small print paragraphs that won't cover this, won't do this. It's nothing more than, I think, a lot of cases, a scam. You know that as well as I do. I do, and we've we went through that for years. As long as it's been able to have car warranties by used car dealers, uh, there's so many of them, and most of them have went broke. Yep. I got another call waiting. Are, they're probably pretty reputable. You're right. I got another call waiting, but I appreciate what you brought up this morning because that's been a real sore with me for a long time. Keith, God bless you, and Nancy, have a good day. Thank you. All right. Caller, I'm a coming. I'm a coming. Hang on just a minute. I want to remind everybody about Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation. Nick and the crew, these are the best doggone people and great, great physical therapists. I mean, they know all the exercises. They know how to get you back to being and feeling you. That's right. Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation, 1263 Bennett Avenue, Suite 2 in Burley. People who work there, grew up here, they're friendly. They know everything about how the different exercises, the sports medicine, and how that hydrotherapy pool can help you. Oh, yeah. Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation, 678-1191. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Thank you for your patience. Okay, good morning, Zeb. Uh, a little something to raise your blood pressure this morning. Uh, Friday uh, evening on the uh, Fox Channel, it was either five minutes before six or after, uh, we had a radical Muslim woman living in the United States just telling all the Muslims in this country, do not assimilate. Yep. Yep. Isn't, yep. isn't that nice? Well, her name is Linda Sarsour, and she's a Muslim woman to be feared. She's a Muslim woman to watch out for and put her on a high-priority list of trouble because she blatantly shows what exactly Islam wants, and that is total control of the United States. Oh, yeah, they want to uh, take over and uh, eliminate us. Yeah. That, that's what their whole uh, uh, thing is. This woman is... What they're living for is take the United States down. This woman is one of the most... In this country ought to get <laughs> on the phone and uh, burn the ears of our congressmen over. We don't need people like this. They're nothing but a bunch of saboteurs. Well, and uh, most of our congressmen and senators aren't smart enough to understand how dangerous people like her are. And wheels, we're getting feedback. Ride the game, buddy. Linda Sarsour is a Palestinian-American activist who has expressed support for terrorists and recently called on Muslims to wage a form of jihad against President Trump and his administration. I mean, how much more of a traitorous and uh, terrorist attitude must she display before somebody tells her to shut up. Well, the whole problem is uh, football season's coming up, and a lot of people are sidetracked by uh, our sports today, and they're not really paying attention to what's really going to destroy our country. I agree. And, and this woman is vile. This woman absolutely needs to be watched, and quite frankly, uh, she is the warning card that is being played by Islam to watch out because they're coming after us. They want the world to feel sorry for them. Boo-hoo, the Muslims. Oh, oh, oh. And then they have total control. They're sitting back because it's only a matter of time. We are in deep trouble, Zeb, and that's it. 
That's no kidding. I agree. I haven't had this feeling for years. Uh, I do now. I do now, Tony, my friend. God bless you, Tony. I appreciate your call. Thank you. Okay. Thank, thank you. you. Bye. I uh, really appreciate Tony bringing this up. This Linda Sarsour is trouble. T-R-O-U-B-L-E. Trouble. And it's going to get worse. She has come out and many, many times on my program, and I'm very proud that uh, Brigitte Gabriel is one of my dear friends. Well, this Linda Sarsour has come out, and I will not, cannot, nor will I lower my standards on this program and use the language that this filthy-mouthed Muslim woman used against Brigitte Gabriel and uh, a couple of other women that have spoken out against Islam and what Linda Sarsour is doing in particular. And this Linda Sarsour is somebody to be feared. At the beginning of her speech that she was giving the other day, she thanked a person that is a Brooklyn-based cleric for Islam, Saraj Wahaj. And he was an He was a named, unindicted co-conspirator in the first World Trade Center bombing. Oh, that's just a part of her little team. Calls are welcome, 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. I'm going to talk about Oakley Pioneer Days for a minute. Give me a call. Come on, I want to get you on the air. Oakley Pioneer Days, starting on the 14th. Holy buckets, that's just in a couple of days. They're going to have that great big nine-cylinder, ninth annual bump and rub four-cylinder car race. There we go. And it's two big nights of racing up at Oakley. Oh, my goodness, to kick off Oakley. Pioneer Days. Wow, are they going to have fun. Along with Team Ropens and Jim Cannas and an open rodeo co-sanction with the IMPRA on Friday and Saturday, July 21-22. Fireworks and dancing and parades on the 22nd. Man, they know how to have fun in Oakley at their Pioneer Heritage past, present, and future. Oakley Pioneer Days. Don't you miss it. And by the way, quickly, caller, I'll be there in a second. I'm I'm a coming. I'm a coming. Also want to remind you about our dear friends at uh, Oakley, that some of the merchants that say, come on by Clark's for shopping at 100 East Main Street in Burley. Oh, my goodness, that hometown grocery store with that famous breakfast sausage from Grandma's Recipe. If you have never had that, you'd better get in and get some today. They really support Oakley and the Pioneer Days Clark's for shopping. Along with Oakley Valley Stone, 204 West Main Street in, Bur- in Oakley, and they wish the people of Oakley, a very happy and fun-filled 130 anniversary. Wow! And don't forget, for all your headstones, landscaping, everything, look no further than Oakley Stone, 204 West Main in Oakley. Really great folks. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Thank you. Good morning, Jeb. You know, I made a horrible mistake yesterday. I let my wife go by one of them Globe News or Inquirer News out of Twin Falls. And, you know, it's just about as bad as the woman Tony was talking about. You know, it's just almost an un-American newspaper. What a disgrace. Yeah. What a disgrace to the world that piece of crap is. I just am sick to my stomach. I let another one of them come through my door. I just wish to heck they would print the truth once in a while. Well, it's really changed. It seems like every time I get it, they're down on somebody, and it just irritates me to death. Well, their somebodies are normally uh, the right and or Republicans. That's who they're down on. 100% right. Yeah. They're just, you know, they trash everything they do. They can't find any good with anything. Well, Jerry, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Stop. Stop. I want you to tell me something. I need to answer, have you answer a question. You probably followed Donald Trump's trip to Europe for the G20. You probably heard that most American leaders were very, very happy with the way he conducted himself and the way that he had the speech that America is going to try to be again a world leader. But you never hardly heard a word on any of the media here in this country giving Trump any credit. Well, it's a disgrace the way our news media is working. I agree. It's, it, you 
know, I, I heard about things like this when I was in grade school. The teachers talked about the news in Europe, how they, you know, toned it down and reported things that were wrong and how great our papers were for reporting the truth and being honest. And, you know, it's just a disgrace where, to where they were then. Yeah. Now, and it just makes me sick to my stomach to get one of them papers and read it. I wished, I wished with all my heart, I would not have gotten it. Okay, Jerry. And the reason I got it was for an obituary. I wanted it because I knew the person. But I'll tell you what, I won't even do that again. Yeah. If I can't get the obituary and read it in an honest paper, I don't want it. All right, Jerry, I appreciate your thoughts as always, and you bring up a really valid point. Thank you, my friend. God bless you. Have a good day. Thanks. You too. All right, sir. Uh, he's right. I, I want to get back just a minute, if I can, about this Linda Sarsour. I mean, I, uh, I've i been following this woman for a long time. She also rallied on behalf of Razmia Oda, a Palestinian woman who was convicted of killing two Israelis in a 69 bomb attack. And she's also come under fire for some of her past comments about other female activists, including uh, Brigitte, Brigitte G. Gabriel that I talked about just a few moments ago, and she said some filthy, filthy things about them. This woman uh, said that Muslims should wage a form of jihad against Donald Trump. You know, that's like, if, if you were to stand up while Obama was in office and say something like that, or words comparable, you probably would have the Secret Service knocking on your door or windows, or coming in to talk to you. And this woman is pathetic. She absolutely uh, was speaking at the 54th Annual Convention of the Islamic Society of North America, and she said, a word of truth in front of a tyrant, ruler, or leader, that is the best form of jihad. She said, quoting the Islamic prophet Muhammad, be that as it may, and uh, I'm really afraid... And I put that word in quotation marks, afraid of her and her ilk. And I'm going to tell you what, they're playing, like I said a moment ago, they being the Muslims and Islam in general in this country. They are playing the card of, oh, poor us, oh, pity us, oh, the travel ban, oh, everybody's picking on us, oh, poor Muslims, inch by inch by inch, they are playing that card and they want the world to apologize to them. And like I said a moment ago, they, the Muslims, sit back and say, it's only a matter of time. Calls welcome, 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. Hey, I want to remind you, too, about our friends over at Autumn Haven Assisted Living Center. What nice people at 924 Christian Way in Rupert. Number to call, 436-3200. They are the only locally owned and operated assisted living facility in the Minicasha area, and they really, really care about the people that stay there. They have a 16-bed facility, and they just absolutely want the public to come by and visit their facility any time, and they make every effort to make Autumn Haven the best. That's right, 924 Christian Way in Rupert, number to call, 436-3200. Autumn Haven Assisted Living Center, they're small compared to some, but with a bigger heart than most. Right now, I'm going to give away a dozen cookies. Yes, I am. And our cookie sponsor, of course, is Sophie's Chatterbox at 530 East Street in Rupert. And a great bakery. Oh, phenomenal bakery. Great restaurant. And uh, I urge you to stop in anytime, all the time, and enjoy great eating. Super nice people. Now, here's the question for today. And first time winners only. If you cheat, No, 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 don't do that. Let somebody else win first time. Here is the question. Everyone knows Roy Rogers' horse trigger or Gene Autry's horse champion. But what about Hopalong Cassidy's horse? What was his name and what color was he? 
four three six two two four four one eight six six nine two seven four five eight seven. What was Hopalong Cassidy's horse's name and what color? was he first person to call 436-2244 will with the right answer win a dozen cookies from sophie's chatterbox come on get on the line give me a call uh, I want to remind you too while i'm waiting for your call that we have a segment on um, uh, thursdays called it's time to grow with university of idaho tony mccammon oh my goodness that guy he does a whale of a job as the horticulturalist for uh university of idaho and that's on at nine fifteen on thursdays don't miss it it's time to grow with tony mccammon horticulturalist from the university of idaho on thursdays once again what was the name of hopalong cassidy's horse and what color was it? Come on, that's an easy one. Give me a call at 436 2244 927 4587 Wheels, while we're waiting for that caller, can you please give us a good word about the Silver State Stampede? Nevada's oldest rodeo. The Silver State Stampede roars into Elko July 13th, 14th, and 15th for family entertainment at its best. This PRCA rodeo brings you the thrill of professional riders going head-to-head in one of the world's toughest sports, rodeo. The action kicks off Thursday with the annual kickoff party featuring mutton busting, Old West Bronc riding, tri-tip dinner for just 10 bucks, and an extra dose of the world-famous Ring of Fear. Head into Friday and Saturday for PRCA Rodeo Action with the award-winning Wild Child, Rodeo Clown, and Dance the Night Away with the Jeff Palmer Band. So gather your friends and get your tickets today for the 2017 Silver State Stampede, July 13th through the 15th. And don't forget to wear your pink for Tough Enough to Wear Pink Night on Saturday. Family entertainment at its best for the 2017 Silver State Stampede at the Elko County Fairgrounds. You'll pay for the whole seat, but you'll only need the egg. I love Love the folks down there at Elko. As a matter of fact, we're going to have a good friend of mine, former top bareback rider Pat Laughlin, on the committee down there. He's going to be on the program with us next hour. Wheels, nobody has called in for the cookies. What in the world? That's not that tough a question. What was the name of Hopalong Cassidy's horse, and what color was it? Come on, give me a call, 436 2244 I kind of shocked to be honest with you i thought sure we'd have uh, the phones ringing in by now because that's an easy one come on think uh while i'm waiting for your call uh the award for being probably one of the dumbest politicians ever goes to new york city mayor bill de blasio not only dumb but uh, very un and in considerate. So we're going to talk about that in just a moment. Uh, caller, good morning. You're on the air. Go ahead. Good morning. Um, the horse was white, and its name was Flash. No. No. I am okay. so sorry. You sound like such a nice lady that really wanted those cookies, but I can't let I you have them. Did, but there's another day. All thank right. You. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, come on now, folks. What was the... This is so easy. I mean, hop along, Cassidy. My goodness sakes. He was an outstanding TV serial uh, cowboy hero, and his famous horse was named what? And what color was he? And give us a jingle, 436-2244. I thought, honestly, that that would go to the first caller that called in this morning. Uh, Come on, give me a jingle quick. I want to give away the cookies. Come on, hurry. Uh, Bill de Blasio, you know what? Uh, The ultimate in contempt for decency and values. Did you hear what he did last week? It's pathetic. With that uh, lady policewoman, uh, Mia Sotis Familia, that was shot, actually she was assassinated, sitting in her squad car, and they had the funeral services and other services with some of the respect that was going to be shown to her and other policemen, and de Blasio opted 
not to go to those services for his own city police. And he jumped on a plane and went over to the G20 summit meeting in Hamburg, Germany, to be with the protesters. This is despicable. Despicable. This man is nothing more than a mayor. He is not a senator. He's not a congressman. He's not a State Department official. He is certainly not a world leader. And he is the mayor of a city. Instead of trying to bring the city together in a moment of complete sorrow, he jumps on an airplane and goes to Hamburg, Germany, and becomes a part of the protesters. I have nothing, nothing but contempt for Bill de Blasio, so-called mayor of New York City. Caller, good morning. And are you calling about this or the cookies? The cookies. Am I eligible, Zeb, if I never won the cookies but won a cinnamon roll? Uh, how long ago did you win? A couple years ago. Oh, I'll let you have a trance at it. Go ahead. Well, the horse's name was Topper. And the color was white. There you go. What's your name? Leon Clegg. Leon, you're right. I felt bad for that last lady. She had the color correct. It was a white horse, but it was Topper. And I honestly thought, Leon, everybody would get that in the first phone call. But uh, that was Hoppy's horse, Topper. And it was white. Thank you for your call this morning. Thank you. All right. All you have to do is call over to Sophie's and tell them when you'll be there to pick up your cookies. And that number is 436-0354. All right. Calls are welcome. 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. Come on. Give me a call. Love to hear from you. And uh, did you hear also, this is this is something else, the Democrats need a really good team of psychiatrists. <laughs> I said I would back off on them if they started to back off on their absolute insane uh, uh, predictions, calculations, and uh, they're saying, I-, I can't do it anymore. They're all nuts. This new left is off the rails. Did you hear that Trump, while he was over at the G20, and I'm giving a whole bunch of paraphrases on this story because I don't want to bore you with all the stats and everything, but they're sitting at the G20 meeting. Well, Trump had another meeting with Japan's leader, and it was only going to be basically a few minutes out of the meeting where all the leaders were in the world. So Trump excused himself very politely, and his daughter Ivanka Trump uh, sat in on the chair he was using. And all heck has broken loose from the liberal left, and they are just absolutely railing that other leaders had to speak to her and not to the president, and they thought that was such a put-down. But let me back up here for a minute. Number one, it has happened many, many times in the past by other world leaders asking for someone to submit their uh, being into the chair while they step out, either for a bathroom break break or to possibly say something to another leader before they have to leave and go back to their home country. It is nothing new, nothing new. But the left is obsessed with finding anything and everything microscopically against this Trump administration. They can't accept the fact that they're doing a doggone good job. Now, I mentioned earlier this morning, And I've got copies of headlines from about, oh my, 15, 20 world newspapers, and they're all bragging about how Donald Trump as our president is bringing together the world that has been kind of unhinged for the last eight years, thanks to Barack Obama. He's bringing them together. There's a there's a feeling of toughness. There's a feeling of togetherness. There's a feeling of progress that they can they can pull together and get something accomplished for world peace. But yet our own newspapers, our own media, they will not give this man and his administration any credit whatsoever. It's absolutely pathetic.
Call is welcome, 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. Come on, give me a call. Don't forget Barry Equipment and Rental. Hello, Barry Equipment and Rental. Sales, service, and parts. South Lincoln and Jerome, Addison Avenue West in Twin, and 159 West Highway 30 in Burley. You know, they have all the equipment to get the job done right. Well, whether it's the Bobcat Excavators, of which I have to get one and get it soon, and uh, they've got all the equipment rentals and retail equipment sales, I'm telling you, they can and will help you. And they've got those walker mowers. You can mow like the pros do. 0% interest for 48 months. Ooh, yeah. Stop in at Berry Equipment and Rental in Jerome Twin Falls and 159 West Highway 30 in Burley. They have the equipment for you. All right, now it's your turn. Come on, folks. There's so much in the news. I'd really like to hear from you this morning, so give us a jingle. 436 2244 1866 927 4587. You know, right now, this mess with James Comey, former FBI director, not finished by a long shot. Now, little by little, stories are coming out in uh, various forms of alleging that James Comey may have uh, created some falsehoods, lied, and leaked classified information to certain members of the media, including the New York Times. Now you say to yourself, oh, enough already about Comey. Let's just let the situation croak. No, no, we can't do that. Here's a man that should have been and acted upon the highest regard of ethics as the director for the FBI. Here is a man that went to his car during various breaks in the hearings and allegedly, sent his uh, information about various subjects to various people in the media. That's not kosher. It's not legal. And there's going to be a whole bunch more checked on about what he did, who he sent it to, and why, and hopefully so. James Comey. And then you've got Robert Mueller. Think about this. Those two kind of joined at the hip as being good friends, good old buds in the FBI. And Mueller is doing a supposedly very uh, open and honest investigation of the Trump administration and James Comey with his problems, supposedly, with Donald J. Trump. Hmm. The plot thickens. Calls welcome, 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. Hey, uh, it's time for the weather, and I, I really want your calls this morning. Boy, we're short on calls. We've only had, what, seven, eight or so? Let's get some more calls in here. Mount Harrison Audiology and Hearing Aids brings you the weather. Dr. Christine Pickup and her staff are the only locally owned and independent hearing health care practice in southern Idaho. And uh, they're right across from the Minidoka Hospital Emergency Room. The number to call, 312-0957. That number again, 312 Five, seven. Wonderful people helping you and your hearing at Mount Harrison Audiology. Right now, here's the weather. It's going to be another warm one as we kick off another work week. Plus, we are in a red flag warning. That means no burning, as we do have tender dry conditions out there today. Looking at sunny skies, high of 92. We do have a slight chance of some afternoon rain, showers, or thunderstorms. Winds out of the west right around 10 to 25 miles an hour for tonight. Looking at clear skies, low 56 tomorrow. Sunny skies cooling off to 89, if you consider that a cool off. Looking at an overnight low of 55. Then for Wednesday, sunny skies and 92. That's your weather. 
Seven Oh, my goodness. She does a good job. I love her forecast. Christine Pickup, the doctor of audiology at Mount Harrison Audiology and Hearing Aids, invites you please to pick up the phone, give them a call, and schedule a hearing screening today, and they can and will help your hearing problems. Mount Harrison Audiology and Hearing Aids, 312-0957. Well, good morning, caller. How are you? Well, good morning, Mr. Bell. I'm doing wonderful. How about you? Peachy. Cool. Hey, you know this thing with de Blasio, or, and uh, 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 he comes from a city that is uh, riddled with crime. The, I believe they're one of the, the uh, gun-free zones. Um, who the hell does he think he is? going over there and interfering with what our president is trying to do. Not just him, but also Obama. Why don't, why don't they arrest these people for treason? They're going behind his back and counteracting everything he's trying to do. And you know what? It's going to hurt Americans. Well, there's no doubt, Donna, that what you said is true. But number one, the news media is not going to portray them as any kind of a villain. And wheels, watch the feedback, please. Uh, the news media is not going to portray Bill de Blasio as any kind of a zero in mentality because of what he did. They're not going to go after Barack Obama. You know, if you didn't hear it here on this program or very few selective other programs, you wouldn't even know what had happened. Oh, I know, I know. You know, I've been watching this thing on on uh, the international news on my computer, and it's like, what? Obama is not the president anymore. Why is he even over there doing uh, what he's doing? Why hasn't he been arrested? You know, he's done more damage in going on almost 10 years now than any president before him. Why has he not been prosecuted him and his whole cabinet now this comey thing is coming out we all anybody with a half a brain cell knew that he was lying and that he's been corrupt the whole time i mean why it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out that these people need to be in prison well donna just bear with me a minute and let me finish this little scenario and then give me your comment It was long known in the Obama administration that the eight years that he was the president of the United States, it was a comfy, comfy kind of a comforter blanket of trying to transition our American attitude into a European-style attitude. You know, he buddy-buddied with everybody and tried to make some of the things that happened over in Europe start to occur here and lose our Americanism. Excuse me for choking in your ear. But you know, it's not working. The European model is not working and can never work in this country because of our rugged independence and our individualism. And this is why the left is just absolutely going crazy. The elites like Obama and some of these others, oh my goodness, Trump and his attitudes, they're starting to win. We've got to stop him any way we can. They absolutely are between a rock and a hard place right now. Oh, I totally agree. They they don't know which hand to shake. Um, I, I, it just amazes me that we have tolerated, you know, we the people are their employer. We hired them. We voted them into office. And what we need to do is vote them out of office and let them know that we are not going to tolerate this anymore. Well, and as far as, as far as Trump, you know, he's, he's, he's a no bull poop kind of guy. You back him into a corner, and I think we're going to end up with a, in a whole bunch of trouble. Well, the thing I'm saying right now about Donald Trump is he may not have been the favorite or the poster boy for any of the elites, but I'll tell you this. I like the way he is uh, very outspoken. I like the way he's very frank. I like the way he walked up to Putin and looked him in the eye and shook hands, and it's going to be our way or no way. I like that attitude, and for those that absolutely are of the elites and they're wringing their hands going, oh! Oh, no, we're losing control. Good. Go sit in the corner and cry like a baby because that's what you are. Yes. and No, I I totally agree with you about Trump. 
I, I think that if they would just shut the heck up and let him do his job, which we know they're not going to do, they're going to fight him tooth and nail, I think he could get things done that uh, several presidents before him couldn't accomplish. I agree. Because he is not one of the good old boys association. I agree. Good to hear from you this morning, yeah. Donna. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. Have a good day. All right. Thank All you. Right. Nice, nice lady right there. Thank you very much. Calls are welcome. 436 2244 1 927 4587. The Democrats are losing control. I mean, the numbers are way down. People are saying, Democrats, who wants to be with that party? They don't have a platform. They don't have any leadership. They don't have any upcoming leadership. They don't have anything to stand on. They're losing control, and they're going, oh, my, what are we going to do? Well, they are spinning their wheels in the sand of trying to rake up things that are 9, 10, 12 months ago, before and during the election. And they're not getting anywhere. They're not getting any traction. The American public says, come on, Russian collusion, let's get on with it. We've got a mess over in North Korea right now that needs everybody's attention from both sides of the aisle, Republican and Democrat. Let's cut this garbage and get something done. The American people has had it with the Democratic crybabies. Wah, 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 poor as us. That's the Democratic attitude. Instead of concentrating on the real issues of that chubby little fat pig over in North Korea, Kim Jong-un, pointing missiles at us, they'd rather say, well, we still think there was Russian collusion in our election. Well, there wasn't. And there's no proof to back that up, but we do have proof that there are other insanes out there like Kim Jong-un they want to kill us. So why don't you get back in the ball game and start acting like what you should for your constituents and stop the real problems. That'd be a first. Hey, don't forget, Ag Express is looking for drivers, and they're looking for full and part-time positions. Retired folks are welcome, and they'll work around your schedule, whatever works best for you. New and maintained equipment, vacation schedules, uh, benefit programs, no seasonal downtime. I'm telling you, this is a great, great opportunity. Call Dale and Paul at 438 438- 8886. Alan in Twin Falls at 731 2495. And Chad and Burley at 670 7219. Ag Express is looking for drivers. Yep, Ag Express is looking for you. Uh, one of the pet peeves that I have, and I know. Others in uh, around my neighborhood and other people around the area have expressed the same concern. Is what is with you people, and I've underlined you people, that when you're going down the road and you've got a cheeseburger and a little box of fries and maybe a Diet Coke or whatever, you feel the urge to dump it out the window on somebody else's property. Have you, you know, no chance of ever getting a high school diploma? Have you ever had a chance at maybe uh, realizing right and wrong and uh, some ethical values in your life? I mean, to those that go by and throw garbage out on people's property and just drive on, I personally... I really have thought about this. I would love to find you, and I will exhaust every effort to find you and where you live. And due to the fact that I have livestock, it would be relatively easy for me to do the following. Uh, If I ever find out who goes by and throws out their uh, Big Mac wrappers or whatever it might be, I am going to give you a gift to where I will fill gunny sacks of recycled alfalfa, and I will put that... um, project on your front porch all of it i promise don't forget our magic valley les schwab tire centers and all seven locations serving you and they want you to get where you're going this summer safely with the best in tires for your cars pickups and suvs all your trailers everything they've got all the different tread designs they know what type of tires and tread design will best befit your driving situations and where you're going what you're going to do they 
no tires. Absolutely, they're professionals in tireology. And along with that, of course, the best in brake service with highly trained technicians. And I also want to mention shocks and struts, front end alignments and batteries. All of this and more with Lane and Rupert, Dave on Blue Lakes and Twin, Mike and Buell, Mike and Jerome, the Twist family in Paul, Daniel on Pole Line in Twin Falls, and Randy on Overland in Burley. Your Magic Valley, Les Schwab Tire Centers. Caller, I got one minute. Go. I got a solution to your problem with the trash. McDonald's and all of the other fast food places, <clears throat> if they would put your name and address and phone number on each bag, uh, wouldn't that help a little bit? Yeah, I tell you what, I'm so sick of picking up other people's garbage and the slovenly attitude of just pitching it out the window, whether it's on private property or on federal land. People are lazy, and people are becoming just absolutely childish in their attitude. Are you going home? What? Oh, I was hauling to the neighbor's dog. Yeah. Well, you, you yell at the neighbor's dog, and I'll go to the news. Thank you. Go ahead and yell at that pooch. Get home, dog. Hurry up. Leave him alone. I'm going to go to the news now from CBS. That's coming up next, and I'll be back in about seven minutes. Thank you. Here with Zeb at the ranch. <laughs> Oh, welcome back. Here we go. Hour number two. Going to be another hot one today. Monday, July the 10th. Good morning. Zeb at the Ranch with our major sponsor, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations serving you, along with some of our great advertisers like Western Way Services. From the canyons of the Snake River. goodness you've got a big wedding coming up or maybe a class reunion or a huge outside concert well you remember you better have some potties for your party yep they've got all the porta potties at western way services always at your disposal so don't forget you bought a checklist you got all the music you got all the bandstands you got all the chairs but you don't have the potties holy smokes give them a call at seven three four six nine six nine western way services Always at your disposal. Don't forget, to our friends at Ark Animal Hospital, and I'll tell you what, they do such a great job over at 750 21st Street in Hayburn. Number to call, 678-1177. And, oh, my goodness, don't leave your dogs and your kitty cats in your car in this hot weather. No, 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 it can reach 140, 150 degrees in there. And it's against the law, too, so please be careful with your animals. If they can stay home and stay cool, that's the best place for them. Ark Animal Hospital is a mixed animal practice, meaning big or small, they love them all. And they do have the warm hearts for the cold noses. Ark Animal Hospital in Hayburn, number to call 678-1177. Right now, let's go to the phone line. And boy, am I ever uh, treated to have an old friend come on the program. Former top bareback rider and now on the committee of the Silver State Stampede. Hello, Pat Laughlin. How are you? are you? I'm doing good, Zeb. How are you, my old friend? Well, you know, the old part is really the truth. I'm getting a little bit longer on uh, the tooth and the earlobe and gray on the top of my head, but I got to tell you something, Pat. For all the years that I was down there at Elko for the Silver State Stampede, thank you for memories that can never be replaced. You folks down there put on one heck of a good event. Well, thank you, Zeb. But we sure do miss you, though, I'll tell you that. And Oh, I've got to ask you, too. I said, you still got those furs? i, I got to tell you, I'm going to send you a picture. They are hanging on my trophy case, one on each side for the belt buckles. My son made me a very nice trophy case, and they are some of my most prized possessions, and thank you very much. Perfect. Perfect. That's good. Yeah, we sure do miss you down here, Zeb. We're, we're still giving our heck down here and trying to make our rodeo a little better every year, and... uh 
get those entry fees or those uh, prize money up a little bit and get those top guys here and we just keep grinding away. Let me ask you something, Pat. As a former bareback rider, you know better than most people how important it is to have really good stock to draw in the best cowboys. What about the bar T and what about the stock that's coming in this year? Yeah, uh, you know, several years ago, it's been, well, back over 10 now, probably. Uh, Bud, of course, was still alive, Kirby, and uh, great friends with Bill Wines. And myself, you know, from years back, and our rodeo really took a turn when we got convinced them to come here, which wasn't hard because Bud always loved him and Bill were great friends, and he loved Elko. And matter of fact, he do, he uh, dropped the rodeo that he got paid a lot more money than he does did here at the time to uh, to come be the stock contractor here. And when we got Marty, our you know our rodeo really did turn around and, and took off. We. It just was a better show. We got uh, the top cowboys in here because they know they're getting on good horses. And, you know, our, we went leaps and bounds after we got Barkey. That's probably the biggest turning point of this rodeo in the over 20 years that I've been on this board. It was, that that was the greatest thing move we ever made, and we're, we're sure to lucky for, to have it, you know. You know, your rodeo has grown, and you've had many, many awards as to being one of the most outstanding rodeos of your size in the United States. Talk a little bit about that. It takes a lot of work with a good committee to put you where you are today. Yeah, it takes a, it takes a lot of work, and it takes a lot of money just to get the thing going off the ground every year, Zeb. Uh, and we won numerous awards, uh, you know, the best medium-sized rodeo, I guess, or we were small-sized rodeo in the Wilderness Circuit. They they gave that to us, so, and it's voted on by the Cowboys. I think I think it, it used to be. I don't know if it still is, but, I mean, we won it like eight, nine years in a row, and they finally just had to give it to somebody else, I'm sure. You know, they couldn't just keep letting us have it, but then they'd go one year, and somebody else would get it, and they'd come back and give it to us another two or three, and then, We've won it so many times I can't even keep track, but that alone right there uh, says a lot because it's voted on, like I said, by by the Cowboys and the Cowboys and all the participants, and they, they always really like to come here, it seems like, you know. Well, I'll tell you what, it's going to start this week on Thursday and go through Saturday. Give us, uh, i got about three minutes left here, Pat. Give us kind of a thumbnail sketch of what's going to happen on Thursday and then on Friday and Saturday. Okay, well, Thursday is kind of our kickoff party, and we have our ranch hand bonk riding uh, first round there. You know, uh, everything we do that night is uh, ranch hand party. We have a tri-tip dinner in a band kickoff, and it's kind of a little bit lower key than the other two big rodeo nights. Um, so we get going with that, and we have a cow cut, and then we have sheep riding for the little guys, mutton musting, you know, and that kind of gets us going. And then the next two nights are, of course, are the big... Uh, the big two big performances, and uh, we've got all the rodeo events, and then we have some bong fighting mixed in with it. And we have a, usually a, spe- a few specialty acts and stuff. Wild Child was going to be here this year, but he called just a couple of weeks ago and he had broke his ankle, so we were scrambling to try to find any kind of a replacement clown to win. But so we're back on track with that. And and Tomas, the famous um, Mexican. Uh, uh, trick roper is here. I, I'm not even going to try to pronounce his last name because I messed it up. But. And then, of course, we end up each performance each night uh, with the Ring of Fear, which is a crowd's favorite. We hold our breath, but the crowd really loves it. You know, and, and i got to tell everybody, if you have a chance to get down to Elko this weekend, you're going to be treated to some of the finest Western hospitality you'll ever find anywhere and see a great event at the Silver State Stampede. Pat, uh, are tickets still available, and where can they get tickets when they get down to Elko? It's real easy just to pick them up right at the gate. We don't, you know, it's it's not a real confusing deal for Jam Caprio always has them I believe uh, the boot barn does and uh, people always know Jam Caprio then who that is so you know you can pick them up there but it's real easy to just get them right there at the gate because you have to come in the same gate if you already had your ticket anyway so it's no uh, 
it's not a hard deal at all. You know, I want to tell everybody that, uh, and I say this with heartfelt thanks again to all the great people down at Elko for the many, many years that they allowed me to come down there and announce their event. You will have a great time for you and your family and your friends at the Silver State Stampede this weekend down in Elko, Nevada. And thanks, Pat Laughlin, dear friend. God bless you, man, and I hope to see you soon. You bet, Zeb. Thank you. I'd like to give a big shout-out to that CSI rodeo team out there, Kelly Wardell and Steve Burney. I got one of my boys is on the team up there. He's a bareback rider, so I always like to give those guys a little plug up there. Absolutely. Pat, thank you so much, and say hello to everybody down there if you would, please. I sure will. Have good talking to you. All right. Thank you. There's a dear friend from Elko, Nevada, Pat Laughlin. And Pat was one great bareback rider for a long time. And uh, now on the committee of the Silver State Stampede. Got a lot of respect for those folks down there. They put on a tremendous event. It's this weekend down in Elko, Nevada. Don't you miss it. Oh, my goodness. i got to pay some bills here real quick. And then we're going to have the lovely Miss Vicky on the air. Stand by. I bet she's waiting on the other line. Don't forget Handsome Mortuary at 710 6th Street in Rupert with Joel Hewitt and the number to call 436-5636. I was very honored. Last week, Joel introduced a new program that they're working with called FAMIC that helps to gain information for all of your family members and make it much more easier to follow. You know, some people in your family, you don't know that much about it. Now you can learn and know more about them. Check it out today. Call them at 436-5636. And Joel Heward and Hanson Mortuary, always holding up the highest ethical standards with unquestioned integrity of serving you and your family. You be sure and get a hold of them today. Real quick, too, my goodness, the Idaho Rodeo Hall of Fame, July 28th and 29th at the Canyon Crest Event Center. Call Katie at Canyon Crest for tickets. It's going to be outstanding. 733-9392. Friday night, the Tough Enough to Wear Pink event, and the proceeds go to Breast Cancer Awareness with St. Luke's, and then Saturday night, the Hall of Fame induction, 5 p.m. social hour dinner at 6. Wow! Don't forget it. And our thanks go to DL Evans Banks and and Tech Distributors, your Coors Distributor, Idaho Rodeo Hall of Fame. Oh, my goodness sakes. Good morning to the lovely Miss Vicki. How are you? I'm running a minute behind. Well, good morning, Zeb. Well, if you're talking rodeo, that's all right. You can take that. that, that you're not late. <laughs> you know, it is easy to be late in this kind of weather because it kind of slows you down a little bit with all the heat. Well, what does the slow down in the heat do to the gardens? Well, the slow down to us does not slow down the bugs, let me tell you. They love it right now. They are loving life in general right now. Um, Bugs of all varieties are out. We have spider mite that's hitting real hard on a lot of plants, roses especially. They hit them hard. Um, You have to look at the backside of the leaf. There's little tiny, tiny webbing. It looks almost like a dusty type of a look on the backside of the leaf. But there's little teeny tiny mites in there, little spider mites, and they really eat. They just suck the life right out of your plants. So be aware of those. Um, If you can, dormant oil works pretty good on them because it takes a good oil base to to kill spider mite. Uh, Again, do it of an evening when it's cool. Don't try to do it during the heat of the day. So we've got sod webworm is showing up in the lawns because everybody's watering more. It's hot. The lawns need water. And that lets the sod webworm just come up and eat 24 hours a day. So, no, when you say that brown spots, it's not necessarily a dry lawn. Check your grass before you start watering heavy. Okay, but now you're kind of in a catch-22. If you don't water the lawn, it's going to burn up, and boy, is it going to burn up. If you do water it too much, and then you said the sod webworm. So, what do you do? How do you treat it? Well. Your lawn needs to be on a normal situ- uh, on a normal schedule. I mean, now that it's, if you've got a sprinkler system, you can increase your settings possibly uh, an extra 10 minutes or so. You don't need to water four times a day or whatever, you know. I mean, it doesn't need to be that wet. Lawns are pretty resilient. Uh, a, good, a good strong watering, watering early in the morning or in the evenings is a good time. And then they're saturated up, and they should, they should last the day. Um, you know, as far as that goes. But a lot of people see the brown spots 
in their lawn, and so they crank the water on and start watering. Well, it's not green enough. I better throw the sprinklers on again. They get everything way too wet, and then the sod webworm can just eat like crazy. That's why I say check those, check on those spots as much as you can. Go out, tug on the grass. If that grass comes up real easy with no root on it, just comes up in your hand, then you've got something eating the root off, and that would be your sod webworm. Okay. So at that point in time, it's... You can add all the water you want, and all you're going to do is help him eat. Oh my goodness! See, you got kind of a fat roly poly underneath the uh, underneath the uh, top of the turf that's just absolutely killing your lawn. With the more water that you put on the lawn, yes. And so, uh, water's not going to solve the problem in that area. In that situation, it takes it takes a good chemical. Uh, we have a grub free zone that. Um, that will work on that. We have another one that is more of an organic type situation that can go down, and and it just it it kills them. The time to worry about sod webworm is Mother's Day and Fourth of July. That's the two dates that they tell us to get our chemicals down. Well, we just passed the Fourth of July, so this is the second crop of the sod web that's going to be coming up, starting to eat. Okay, now I have a question, personally, my own question. Do crops in the garden and your lawns and other things, your flower beds and everything, do they get kind of an athlete's foot fungus from all this hot weather? They definitely can, especially if the ground is kept way too wet. Then their roots get warm and wet, and that's not a good thing. They can get root rot at that point in time. Um, That's why I say do a good deep watering on your plants, and then leave them alone. This business of everybody running out there and watering three and four times a day in their garden, cranking it on for ten minutes, ten minutes, ten minutes, just doesn't do anybody any. It doesn't do any good. It just it adds humidity and it can bring fungus up in your garden. Do a good deep watering when so the plants have got the soil will hold that water. And do a good deep watering. Let the plants have a good drink when it's cool. Have their their plants. The plant can absorb that water and completely nu- uh, nurture itself, and then it's ready for the heat of the day. They might wilt a little bit when it's hot. So do I. But that doesn't mean <laughs> that somebody's supposed to water me forever. <laughs> 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 One of those things to where you do you cut. They'll wilt a little bit in the day, but they'll pick right back up at night again. As long as you've got the moisture in the soil. They're good to go. They don't need that. You'll sunburn. You can scorch. You can do a lot of damage in the heat by watering over the top. You know, it's funny you should say what you just said a minute ago, because I did get a letter from a very nice lady, and she said, you know, every week on your program with Miss Vicki, you talk about what to do to help the crops and what to do to help the lawn and the flowers and everything, but what about the gardeners themselves in this warm, very hot weather? How about protecting us, the people that take care of the gardens. Well, that's exactly it. Get out early in the morning when it's nice and cool and you don't feel the heat as bad. It's not as tough on you. Wear a good hat or something to kind of protect yourself a little bit. Definitely use your sunscreens because it is hot and you will sunburn out there. And mosquito repellent, they're out. They're in, they're in full force. But, I mean, get out in the early mornings, in the evenings, when just, you know, before dark, when it cools down, that's a good time to work in your gardens. Um, then you're going kind of, you're, you're gonna to have more time to see. The sweat won't be running in your eyes, and you can actually see your plants. So it'll, it'll help out a little bit on what you're looking for. But main thing is keep hydrated. Keep uh, a lot of these neck wraps that they have out now that, that can keep you cool. If you do have to work out during the heat of the day, just try to go in and sit down and cool off and then go back out. Don't don't try to overdo it because it's dangerous. You know, and like last week, uh, Friday and Saturday, I mean, we were talking temperatures that were just banging on the door of 100 degrees. And I sometimes wonder why people don't think about the early morning or the late night or the early evening hours to take care of these things. Because I'm telling you, it was plum hot and it's going to get up there again today. Yes, it is, and uh, it really, I mean, if you go out and you hold the garden and stuff when it's really hot, you open that ground up so it dries out. So if you'll do it, you know, in the, you know, in the mornings or after you, you know, uh, and then water, it, it, the, the ground will absorb the water better. 
Oh. So, I mean, early mornings, late evenings is always a better time to go out and work on, you know, work around your plants and things of that nature. Uh, you'll be able to see the damage that bugs are doing and that type of thing. So um, just be aware that there's a lot of ugly bugs out there. Deanne was saying this morning that she found a pretty little green worm in her yard, and I said it's not pretty. Yeah, what kind of worm is it? Green worm. <laughs> oh, my. Oh, ugly. Hey, we have a caller with a question quickly. Uh, caller, go ahead. You're on the air. Vicki, these little black, tiny, round bugs are just inundating our property. And I'll send why I find one of them on me once in a while. They don't seem to bite, but they're sure a nuisance. Can you tell me what they are? Are they just like little them? beetles, those little roly bugs? Beg your pardon? Are they the ones that kind of roll up in a little ball? No, these are just tiny little bugs, and they're black. And they fly? Are they flying around, or are they crawling in the dirt? Yeah. I just want to know your exact address, because I'll send you some. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a lot of gnats out right now, a lot of gnats. As anybody with horses and stuff know, you've got oh my. a lot of gnats. Yes. Um, that are flying around, and they are very annoying, and they they like to be in around a lot of moisture, a lot of you know wherever you wherever you know in the gardens and that where there's lots of moisture, that's what they thrive on. They're kind of like a little fungus gnat. The other question I would like to know, and just your advice on, is these bulbs that they advertise on TV, you screw it into a light socket, and the bugs just come rushing to it, and they die. What do you think about that? Well, there are some of these different things. I have one on my patio that has a light in it, a special type light that draws bugs, it's like the bug zappers, that type of thing. That, and that's what they're going for is uh, bugs do draw light. There's no doubt about it. Right. They will pull into, at night, they pull into light. And if you've got a bug zapper, that's, you know, that's what gets them. I don't know about just the plain light bulb. But I do know that there are some different things out there that you can put in your yard that will draw bugs to them and away from you, which is a nice plan. <laughs> oh, okay, caller, thank you very much for your call. Good question. I appreciate it. Vicki, I want to go Have back a for a uh, you bet. Thank you, Keith. Uh, I want to go back to what you said a moment ago about uh, the gnats and, and the bugs and uh, the horses, etc. You know, I try to go out. Maybe I'm doing the wrong thing. I don't know. But I try to go out at least twice a day in the heat of the day and try to soak down the horse pens a little bit to make it a little bit cooler and kind of soak down their surroundings, etc. So actually, I'm enhancing more problems with the bugs, aren't I? Well, not really, as long as there's not standing water. In a horse pen, usually it's a real dry dirt, and so they're kicking it up and drying it out. I don't worry so much about that. The things I worry about is like around water troughs and things of that nature, you'll get those ponds, and that's a mosquito breeding area right. completely. Um, you know, because horses are not, the, you know, they slop water when they drink, and you've got to, you know, when it, anytime you've got a really wet, sloppy, moist area, uh, around uh, water hydrants, in, uh, around water tanks, um, you know, things like that. That's where you're going to draw, that's where these gnats, the gnats and the, the mosquitoes and that are going to breed, you know. So that's where you want to keep your sprays. There are, there's chemo, there's um, mosquito bits that you can put down that will stop mosquitoes, that, that will kill the mosquito eggs so they can't uh, hatch out and become adults and things of that nature but just watch you know watch ponding areas places that stay really damp but watering your horse pens and stuff like that that's not going to hurt anything because of the fact that there's no foliage for the bugs to live in for one thing usually and um it dries out really fast so okay. they're not going to congregate in that that's just going to basically Helps keep the dust, keeps your horses from breathing best, too. All right. Now, quickly tell me about all the different great buys that are going on over at Vicky's Country Garden, 185 South, 600 West of Paul. What have you got for specials, Vicky? Well, we've got, uh, we still have uh, our petunias and our annuals are now 50% off. So if you're needing to spruce up a few areas, then uh, throughout the next month or so, we'll be running some different specials throughout the uh, throughout the greenhouse, you know, different different areas. So just kind of come in and check with us and kind of see what we're doing. But we still have plenty of 
bark and rock and everything to do your landscaping deals with. Uh, lots of perennials that are blooming very nice right now uh, that will come back next year uh, so you don't have to keep planting them. And uh, just, we just, you know, we've got a lot of stuff that is, we've got a lot of nice little trees, shrubs, all kinds of things to help with landscape. All right. Well, listen, I'm looking at the list, and I know that you're busy over there. You've got all the bark and the rock and the outside decor items to make their yard look really, really good. And I'm talking to the lovely Miss Vicky at Vicky's Country Garden, 185 South, 600 West of Paul. Number to call her and find out about anything and everything when it comes to gardening, 438-5663. Vicky, God bless. Stay cool. Thank you, Zeb, and the same to you. Stay out of the, stay out of the heat if you can. <laughs> All right, if you're driving by, you might want to stop by and have a cold adult beverage. I could do that. That sounds like a plan. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Vicky. <laughs> You bet, Zeb. Thanks. All right. Yeah. Bye-bye. Nice, nice lady right there. Vicky at Vicky's Country Gardens. I really like her. Hey, we got to pay some bills here real quick. Don't forget Cameron and Siemens Insurance, Highway 24 in Rupert. Life insurance, health insurance, retirement planning, employee benefits, all of this and so much more to protect you, your family, your business. Please, please give them a call and make an appointment. They are dedicated and responsive to your needs. All you need to do is make an appointment at 436-4424. I'll repeat that number again, 436-4424. Really good professional people serving you at Cameron and Siemens Insurance Highway 24 in Rupert. Also, in that same area, let's not forget where the fun is sold. And that's, of course, at Let's Ride. 270 Highway 24 between Rupert and the World, and they're open Monday through Friday, 9 to 6, Saturdays, 9 to 4. Ho, ho. With these warmer temperatures, people want those watercraft to get on the rivers and the lakes and everything. They got them. They got them over there at Let's Ride. And don't forget all the four-wheelers, and they've got all the side-by-sides. And a great service department to keep you running and keep you enjoying the great outdoors of Idaho. And all the accessories, too. It's all there at Let's Ride 270 Highway 24 between Rupert and the world. Yes, sir, where the fun is sold. Really, really good folks. Right now, let's go to the phone line. And I believe we have a gentleman that's on the air, and he's going to tell us about, <laughs> I don't know how we're going to get all this in, but I tell you what, we've got Steve Staley from Oakley, and he's going to tell us about the Oakley Pioneer Days. Good morning, Steve Staley. How are you? Good morning, Zeb Bell. Thanks for having me on. I am doing well on this Monday morning. My days are starting to run into each other, but... Uh... We're, we're doing well today. You know, i got to ask you this, Steve. When uh, the Oakley Pioneer Days first started, years and years and years ago, uh, boy, they must have had a lot of foresight to get all these activities started for various aspects of the community. I mean, you've got dances, and you've got fireworks, and you've got car races, you've got team ropings, you've got Goose Creek runoff. I mean, how in the world do you manage all these activities? Well, you know, we used to cram it all into one week, and uh, we've we've decided that that's not really a good idea because by the end of that week, the Oakley vigilantes were uh, they were getting ready to not be vigilantes anymore. I don't know what you call them, but uh, we weren't we weren't very friendly to one another any longer. So we decided to space it out a little bit. But boy, I'll tell you what, we have a lot going on from the the Friday the fourteenth, Saturday the fifteenth. Starting back up on the 18th, 20th, 21st, and 22nd, we've got a whole gaggle of fun to be had out to Oakley. Well, now, I haven't looked at to the expression of gaggle, but I assume that that means a plethora of things to do. And let's kind of break it down a little bit and start on the 14th and 15th this week. Holy buckets, I don't know whose idea it was to have a four-cylinder car race, but, man, they hit a home run right out of the park. This thing is gangbusters, and people love it. They do. We've got people that come from eastern Idaho, western Idaho, not just south central Idaho, but they come out to see this car race. It's called our Bump and Rub, and uh, it's our ninth annual car race that we're having this year. We're still looking for entries. It's $150 entry for drivers, payout to the top seven cars, 
we are having a mandatory meeting on the 11th, which is tomorrow. It's out there to Oakley at 6 p.m. at our rodeo grounds. Um, if you'd like to find out some more information on that, you can contact uh, Colt Robinson at 431 or Cash Taylor at 430-2479. Uh, and again, Zeb, you mentioned that, you know, we used to do this all in a week. And it got so busy that we bumped it out. We bumped the bump and rub out the weekend prior to the week of our normal festivities because we were just jamming too much. This used to be a Monday and Tuesday night affair for the bump and rub. Now it's a Friday and Saturday deal. And that wow. was so that we could get those of you that run home on Monday night and try to get the family gathered up and bring them back out for the race. Now it's, it's kind of relaxed. It's, hey, it's Friday. Let's go out and enjoy the races tonight. We'll gather everything back up, and we'll go out and enjoy the races again on Saturday night. That way we're not all just rushed to get everything done at the first part of the week and crash it all together and have it at the end of the week. Okay, so you use... where we are with that. You use the... I appreciate the... Uh, anybody that likes to come out and see that. It's a good time. Um, we've got an interesting track layout this year. It's going to be fast. And we have some K-rail, and for those of you that don't understand what that is, those concrete railings that uh, are along the freeway, we have those now ah. and, uh, incorporated into our track. And it is, it's going to make things interesting. I'm really looking forward to it. Hopefully I will be around to see it. All right, now let me ask you this, and I want you to be very poignantly honest with me. You mentioned the word crash before in your verbiage. Now, are there really any strict rules or regulations, or does this thing kind of get wild and woolly out there? It does get wild and woolly, Zeb. Uh, it's, when you talk crash, uh, yeah, there, there's no glass allowed in the car. All the, all the glass has to be taken out of the car. They have their regular seat belts that are in them. But we ask that, uh, that the radiator have a bumper around it so that the cars can continue to run. But uh, other than that, it's no whole bar. I mean, it's, it's a race. It's a demolition derby race. And it involves two cars, and they go after it. And it's, uh, you can run into the guy in front of you as many times as you want. You can slam on your brakes in front of the guy that's behind you as many times as you want. It is a bump and rub car race, demolition, demolition race. Therefore, well, now surely when the race is over, they get out of their cars and they go over and hug each other and shake hands and everything is hunky dory, right? In a perfect world, yes. <laughs> <laughs> we, we have had to uh, get the vigilantes involved in a, in a few incidences, but uh, for the most part, everybody's pretty cool, calm, and collected at the end of the race, and uh, we part ways as friends and say we'll make it up next year. Uh -huh. uh, that's, that's one of the things that we do like to see, and we often do see, is a little bit of grudge matching going on from year to year, and those are usually the ones that get the biggest hoots and hollers, because these guys are, they're, they're not just racing for... Uh, for the payout, they're racing for uh, the respect of the uh, other drivers that are out there. So it it does become very interesting with those races. Okay, now real quick, tell me, it's going to start at 6 p.m. on Friday and Saturday, and they can get tickets right at the gate, right? That's correct. You can get your tickets right there at the gate. It does start at 6 p.m. and be ready to come out and have a good time. Okay, let's kind of breeze through some of these other activities for Oakley Pioneer Days. Starting on the 18th, you've got a team roping where they sign up at 6.30 and rope at 7. Any other information about that? That's pretty much it. That's the straight uh, information there. If you'd like any more information on any of our events, you can go to our Facebook page, and that's the Oakley Vigilantes on Facebook. But that's the S&M team roping. It's Tuesday. Uh, check it out on, on Facebook. Okay. And then on Thursday, July 20th, the Big Jim Canna. Now, I'll tell you, this event every year, that Jim Canna, holy smokes, I've heard that you have to go sometimes 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning because of all the entries. Yes, we do. And I'm, yes, we do. That it, <laughs> it sometimes becomes a very late night, if not early morning. And uh, we are, it's all hands on deck because there's so much going on. We have a hard time keeping our arena wetted down. 
and the dust from flying in the air, it, it gets so busy around there. So uh, pardon us for that, but uh, we do have the Gem Kana, and that is open to amateur contestants 16 and under. Uh, that starts at 6 p.m. We have everything and anything that you would imagine would go on with a mutton-busting pipe rodeo that was going on out there. Uh, you're able to pre-entry on that uh, July 11th, 12th, and 13th. Um, and uh, give uh, Cash Taylor, our great president out there, the vigilante, to call if you're interested in, in getting your little buckaroo involved in that. And his number, again, is 430-2479. Okay. Now, we're going to have to scoot through this real fast, the rest of these items. On Friday and Saturday, July 21st and 22nd, you're going to have an open rodeo that is co-sanctioned with the IMPRA. Give us a little background on that. That's correct. We are that that way. The IMPRA points. You you can still gather points up on that. Uh, we're going to have wild cow riding going on that night. Seventy five dollars per team. We we've, we've dropped that, and we didn't have any wild cow riding last year because our cows were a little too rank the year before. So hopefully you guys can gather up some teams and bring them out. So it is seventy five dollars a team. There we are going to be shooting off our fireworks that night, and that's always a good time. One of the bigger uh, fireworks shows for as small as it is, it's well worth your money to even come out and, and see the rodeo. Uh, we do have uh, all that going on with the open rodeo. The open rodeo brings in a lot of extra contestants. You've got contestants that uh, are traveling through. They can, they can pick up a lot of added money at this event, so we're able to bring in quite a few big names and pretty big contestants to compete out there put on a good show, an entertaining rodeo for those folks that want to come out and see our rodeo on Friday and Saturday night. And by the way, too, let me interject that after the performance on Friday night, you're going to have a dance featuring Brody Fitch, right? That is correct. I forgot to throw Brody Fitch in there. There is going to be a dance, and that will go on until 1 o'clock there on uh, Saturday morning. And it's, uh, from what I have understand of Brody Fitch and a little bit that I've listened to, he's, he's pretty good uh, pretty good entertainer, so you want to come out and check him out. Okay, now let's go through this real quick. On July 21st and Saturday the 22nd, you're going to try to appeal to more people because you've got a great big three-on-three basketball tournament. We do have a, we've got a lot going on. That's all the extra fun stuff we get to throw in there. We have the three-on-three basketball tournament, um, and that we've got first through eighth grade. Uh, we have ninth grade and up on there, and if you'd like to uh, get in on any of that stuff, you can get a hold of Matt Payton at 4313. Four three three, or uh, Juan Rodriguez at four zero six nine nine one one. Again, all this information is on our Facebook page. So if you're interested in the three on three basketball tournament, be sure to look us up there as well. Okay, I don't want to forget. Also on Friday the twenty first, the co-ed volleyball tournament. Do you want to give us any highlights on that? Yeah, it uh, must have at least two male female players in order to uh, um, be on there. All, but you can have a team of all females. If you're interested in getting in on that, uh, it's $80 per team, and the contact on that would be Sherry Power at uh, 431-1892. Okay, Saturday, July 22nd, holy buckets, everybody, man the lifeboats. You've got a whole slug of activity, starting with the entertainment in the park and a chuck wagon breakfast and the runoff and holy smokes, including the parade. How are you going to get it all done in one day? I don't know, Zeb, and and I, I got now that you mentioned the parade, I've got to bring that up. We are changing our parade. This is something that's different. So everybody, listen up. The parade, instead of being in the evening, it's going to be at 11:30 a.m. And uh, if you'd like to participate again, get in on that. We're going to meet at 10:30 a.m. Call uh, Kevin Schroeder if you'd like to get a float or, or uh, anything in on that. And his number's uh, six seven zero zero seven six six. Uh, along with that, we the parade time change, we've changed our, I'm looking for it here, uh, our Oakley Steak uh, Beef Barbecue, which is generally uh, over at the Steak Building, but uh, we've changed it, and it's going to be at the City Park. So after you get done with the parade, just go right over, on over to the park, and at 1230 they'll start serving the beef barbecue right there. And that goes from 1230 until 230, and it's there at the City Park. Okay. Be sure to come out and, and get your beef barbecue eaten on. And I want to hit, too, if I can, uh, you've got entertainment in the park on that day, the chuck wagon breakfast, and the Oakley pool is going to be open for everybody to cool off. And what about the Oakley Valley Museum and the uh, Howell's Opera House, along with the Goose Creek runoff? Hit us on those topics real quick. I will. 
will. We've got the Oakley Valley Mu- Museum. It's going to be open uh, Thursday from 1 to 5 and Friday and Saturday from 9 o'clock to 4. Um, there's a lot of heritage that you can uh, learn about our area, Pioneer area um, and era that's uh, out there at the museum. Be sure to come out and look at that. We have the Goose Creek runoff, and that is a 10K, 5K, and kids race. There's people that come from all over the land to, to participate in this Goose Creek runoff. It's a good time. Um, you know, I, I would recommend getting in on that. It's uh, the 10K starts at 5:30 a.m., 5K at 6 a.m., two mile walk at 6:30. Uh, the kid race starts at 8 a.m. And if you'd like to get in on any of that action, contact Jackie Bedke, and her number is 431-8589. The Howells Opera House has Joseph and the amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat. And I am really hoping I have a chance to get over there. I've been super busy, but uh, I'm hoping that my wife uh, is able to snag me up and take me to see this. That is showing pretty much all through mid-July and while the Pioneer Days are going on. Um, there will be a matinee on the 22nd of July at 2 o'clock. That's $10 per seat. If you'd like more information on that, call 677-ART, that's A-R-T-S, and that's sponsored by the Oakley Valley Op- or Oakley Valley Arts Council. You know, I've been sitting here talking to you for about 15 minutes, and I've got to tell you what, when you hang up the phone, I'm going to sit back in my chair here and take a deep breath because, man, I'm tired just listening to everything that's going on. <laughs> you and me both, Deb. I'm, I'm, uh, I'll be holding on to my head going, okay, here we go. You know, Steve, before I let you go, I've got to ask you this. Every year, and wheels over at the station, watch the gain on the back uh, feed, would you please? Uh, Every year you have a different theme, and this year it's our Pioneer Heritage Past, Present, and Future. How do you select the top theme for each year? You know, there's there's a panel of people that get together, and they put an awful lot of thought into that. Um, You know, we have a lot of different things that uh, take place. Um, in our past, present, and our future, and, and I, I don't know exactly how that came about, but uh, years ago uh, we had a big flood, and here a few years ago we, we, uh, we reminisced about that flood, and, and uh, I think that uh, from year to year they make that decision based on the, the happenings in our area and throughout our valley and uh, really bring it back down to earth uh, for being thankful for where we live and uh, and and what we have now and uh, looking forward to the future. And I, uh, w- I thank you for bringing that up. We do always have a theme for our Pioneer Days, and, and that's pretty much the way it goes. Is they, they sit down and they come together on an agreement as to what fits us for this year. And this year it's our Pioneer Heritage Past present and future. You know, Steve, you are one good man to interview. You did a great job, rapid fire on all these different events for the Oakley Pioneer Days, July 14th through basically the 22nd. God bless you, man. Thanks for being on the air this morning. Thank you, Zeb. You too. Have a great week. We'll look forward to seeing you soon. All right, buddy. Thank you so much. Wow. Are they going to have a lot of fun? If somebody comes up to you and says, well, gee whiz, I don't know what we're going to do. We have nothing to go to. Look at them and kind of say, are you all right? You better sit down in the shade for a few minutes. There's a ton of things for all the family up there at Oakley Pioneer Days, and it's going to start this weekend. I'm chuckling because that bump and rub car race, (laughs) rules, regulations. I don't think so. Going to be a lot of fun. Don't miss it. Man, they've got a lot of activity up there. Good folks. Oakley, Idaho. Uh, we got to pay some bills. We've got a weather forecast to get on here, and then we'll take some more calls. And the weather brought to you this hour by Phillips, Oaks, Goodwin, Crane, and Company. CPAs that have been providing accounting services to the Minicasha area for well over 50 years. My goodness, the best of tax return preparation, tax planning, business consulting, payroll services, bookkeeping services. My, 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 you better get a hold of them today. They They can, and they will help you. Phillips, Oaks, Goodwin, Crane, and Company. And right now, here's Gina with the weather. It's going to be another warm one as we kick off another work week. Plus, we are in a red flag warning. That means no burning, as we do have tender dry conditions out there today. Looking at sunny skies, high of 92. We do have a slight chance of some afternoon rain, showers, or thunderstorms. Winds out of the west right around 
10 to 25 miles an hour for tonight. Looking at clear skies, low 56 tomorrow. Sunny skies cooling off to 89 if you consider that a cool off. Looking at an overnight low of 55. Then for Wednesday, sunny skies in 92. That's your weather for Zebeth Ranch. Thank you, Gina. And the weather brought to you by the professionals, accountants that really know their business and can help you with yours. They can help people starting a business, a partnership or a corporation, or business owners wanting to hire more employees. All of these questions, all that have good answers from Phillips O. Goodwin Crane and Company. Two locations, 1710 Overland in Burley and 625th Street in Rupert. Bringing you the weather this hour, Phillips Oaks Goodwin Crane and Company. All right, your turn. Give me a call. Love to visit with you. Give us a jingle on the landline, 436-224-1866-927-4587. Give me a call. Love to visit with you about any topic so far this morning. Uh, we've talked about quite a few things on the air this morning. We talked about the Democrats, and really, come on, let's get with the program, get in your chair, and start to work for the betterment of this country. We talked about a Muslim woman that is is to be feared for the troubles and the heartaches that she's trying to uh, kind of raise like embers in a cold fire as she is uh, blatantly shows what Islam wants and they're getting and that's total control of this country. We talked a little bit about the lame, very lame New York City Mayor Bill de Blasio and instead of supporting his police force in New York City and instead of being at a memorial service for the policewoman that was assassinated in her squad car, uh, Mia Sotis Familia, he joined the protesters over in Hamburg, Germany. And we've also talked about James Comey, and we've talked about garbage on people's lawns. Oh, despicable people not being able to take their garbage home and throw it in the trash can because, oh no, that'd be too easy. They'd rather open the window and throw it on other people's property. Disgusting. Give me a call, 436 2244 1866 927 4587, as I almost tipped over the microphone. And while I'm waiting for your call that I hope is coming in, don't forget Ag Express. They are looking for drivers. Absolutely. Full and part time positions. Retired folks are welcome and they'll work around your schedule. Whatever works best for you. And you're home every night. That's the nice thing. And they've got great vacation programs and benefit programs and scheduling 401k plans safety first give them a call today and call dale and paul at 438-8886 or allen in twin falls at 731-2495 or chad in burley at 670-7219 ag express is looking for drivers ag express is looking for you Going to be another hot one out there today. And you, of course, have heard many, many people, including Vicki just a few minutes ago and others, say, be careful out there. Make sure you hydrate. You know, if you don't have a lot of work to do out there in the sun today, don't do it. And if you do, uh, wear a big old brimmed hat like I always do and put some sunscreen on and make sure you try to stay as cool as possible because it is going to get hot. Now, yesterday, I got to tell you, it was a welcome relief. Later on in the uh, early evening hours, around six thirty, seven o'clock, we did have a rainstorm that hit here, and it wasn't a hard driving rain. It was just kind of like standing in a weak shower. Literally. And it felt pretty doggone good. Did any of us run for cover? No. We just kept on roping and had a good time. There was about seven or eight or nine or ten of us. I can't remember all. And we just sat out there and enjoyed the rain. It really had a cooling effect on the evening. Calls are welcome, 436-224-1866-927-4587. Good morning, caller. You're on the air. Well, quickly, you know, you said any subject. And I'm going to talk about a, 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 a classic standard Muslim who's living in a Arab country in the Middle East. And I was, I viewed a... Uh, person who was a former Marine who works in Iraq, 
And because he is an American, and because of the travel ban that Trump is, is uh, executive ordered, he said that if he was to go out into the streets, that he would be quickly dealt with. And, and, and what he meant was he would be killed. And he says, it's not by ISIS, Al-Qaeda, or anybody else. It's by the people that just live in that community, just the standard folks. Now, this is what this gentleman said, and he was in the Marines, and now he's over there as a private contractor. But it just goes to show you that uh, it doesn't matter, you know, it, yeah, there are peaceful Muslims. I just don't know any personally. I know they exist. But you see... On the, the majority are going to, you know, do jihad against well, Randy, let me interject here something. Uh, this woman, Linda Sosherler, that was on television and all the news media this last weekend, a Palestinian-American activist, and she blatantly came right out and said Muslims should wage a form of jihad against Donald Trump. And I don't care if there's one nut job in the audience or if there's a hundred nut jobs in the audience. You have to be careful about what you say and what you ask for. And when you have a Muslim woman like this Linda Sarsour trying to create and stimulate activity against our leaders in our country, that's very, very dangerous. Well, the danger factor is very obvious every day in Western Europe. And you see that the media over there covers it up as bad as CNN and MSNBC does here. In fact, NBC itself. So... The media is complicit in in uh, Europe, and so you see, we don't know just about everyday things that are occurring. Whether or not it's a lady walking her dog down the road, yeah, and uh, she is beaten, her dog is killed, and uh, she's lucky to get away. And these are things that happen every day. Now, if this occurred at twin. Uh, we'd hear about it for a little while, I guess, but I guess, you know, whether or not it was the local media being the paper and maybe even the TV station. Well, I got to run it. Now. I got to run and go to the news, but I wish you'd call earlier. Just a minute, just a minute. I wish you'd call earlier in the hour so I could always get you on and talk more about these items. I appreciate it, Randy. I got to run, but call me back tomorrow morning in the first hour, please. You better. All right. I so busy. Thank you. All right, buddy. Thank you. Don't forget, of course, our friends at Autumn Haven Assisted Living Center at 924 Christian Way in Rupert. The number to call, 436-3200. And, of course, they're the only locally owned and operated assisted living facility in the Minicash area. And they make every effort to make Autumn Haven the best place. Don't forget, folks, call and take a tour. Find out more for the possibility of your loved one residing there at Autumn Haven Assisted Assisted Living Center, 924 Christian Way in Rupert. Number to call, 436-3200. They're small compared to some, but with a bigger heart than most. Right now, let's send it back over to our main studios, and we'll be back after the CBS News. Don't go away. Oh, my... Here we go, and away we go. Hour number three. Zeb at the Ranch, and brought to you by our major sponsor, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations serving you, along with some of our great advertisers like Western Way Services, always at your disposal. Call them at 734-6969. Uh, we're going to have our guest on the air momentarily, but don't forget, too, I want to say thank you to two sponsors of a segment that we have on Thursdays, Cache County School. School days and our thanks go out to a child's world at 1308 Overland in Burley. All of the baby furniture, all of the baby clothing, all the games, puzzles, and toys, along with if you're in a profession where you wear scrubs, they've got all the Cherokee scrubs and shoes right there at a child's world, 1308 Overland in Burley. Along with them, their other sponsor, great thanks to Ambulatory Surgery Center at 1344 Highland Avenue in Burley. Number to call, number 
remember to remember 677-8888. Thanking them for saving us money on outpatient surgeries such as cataract, glaucoma surgery, colonoscopies, and much, much more. 677-8888. Ambulatory Surgery Center and a Child's World bringing you school days in Cache County on Thursdays at 1010. Right now, let's go to the phone line, and we have a former United States representative from the state of New York, Nan Hayworth. Good morning, Nan. How are you? Good morning, sir. A privilege to be with you. And I was listening to your show, and you were talking with Steve about the pioneer spirit, and I am thrilled to be joining you to talk about uh, how we apply that uh, to the folks in D.C., so thank you. Well, you know, Nan, it's my pleasure to have you. And before we get really rolling, I also have had on my program another representative from New York, John LeBoutlier. Did you two serve at the same time? We did not, but I'm a, a, an admirer of the congressman's. And as you know, in New York, you were just talking about Bill de Blasio and uh, what a horror show he is. Uh, truly is. I live about an hour north of New York, and uh, the Congressman Labouche lives uh, about an hour uh, in the opposite direction. And uh, it is it is such a pleasure to join folks in Idaho who understand that everybody prospers when we are allowed to have the dignity of our freedom and to support ourselves and our families in the way we choose. You know, that's very well stated, but you know, when you talk about dignity and you talk about respect and you talk about people that work and serve, our policemen, our firemen, etc., and Bill de Blasio not having the common decency to honor those people and then go stands with protesters, how can you stand that kind of a person in your state? Horrible. Horrible. I mean, that should be so roundly condemned by everyone because... If there, there are there are many people who are great people in the city of New York, and you know I I know these folks. Uh, the New York Police Department, the NYPD, um, and I represent a lot of those folks in Congress because uh, a lot of them live uh, here in the Hudson Valley. Uh, they are the bulwark against terror for the United States in a lot of ways, not just. New York, not just protecting the folks in New York City every day on the streets and putting their lives on the line, but for our country and for Bill de Blasio not to be there is is just it's it's a disgrace. It should be on every network, the banner headline, look at what this guy is doing. This is un-American. Absolutely. Nan, I'm going to state my case on a subject that you know very well, and I want to get your opinion on this for the remaining about 18 minutes on this segment. I'm really disillusioned with the government involvement, first of all, for the last eight years on Obamacare, and secondarily now trying to come up with the Republican version of the Affordable Care Act. I'm almost to the volition that if you can afford your own insurance go get it. If you can't, let's devise some kind of a pooling system because I'm sick and right. tired of government involvement. Am I dead wrong? No, you're, you're completely right, Zeb. You're completely right. Uh, and the problems that we have extend back to, frankly, just after World War II, and that's when the federal government started treating uh, employers different from individuals uh, in terms of purchasing health insurance benefits. Uh, and so it's actually something that, you know, the problem that we have with our system just out of control, normal people, common sense people, uh, can't generally go to someone who would provide them with care at a very reasonable price and make that happen. Uh, because our system is so crazy and the federal government uh, has just made it worse in just about every conceivable way. So we have to find a way to get from where we are now to where we need to be and make sure that everybody who's been so harmed by this system but has come to depend on it in various ways, let's make sure that they understand that we're going to make them whole. Everybody's going to do better. Uh, and and that's, a, that's a tall order. But I'll tell you that the problem that we have, and, and the reason I'm privileged to talk with you this morning, is because I'm trying to help mobilize people from around the country. And your listeners are 
the kind of people we need. We need to mobilize folks around the country because you know who Washington listens to is voters. They listen to constituents. And we need them to demand that the Senate do whatever it needs to do to pass a bill to move forward on this. And we can, uh, but it's going to take a lot of public pressure. You know, again, I, I'm kind of showing my whole card here instead of kind of holding my cards close to my vest. I am absolutely <laughs> sickened by the fact that everybody and every group in our society has a special interest or a special want yes. or they've got their tin cups out for a special donation. Uh, let me talk about Medicaid just for a moment. I don't want to get sidetracked, but I've got to say this. In every state, including ours in the state of Idaho, there's about 80,000 in round figures that want this and they want that from Medicaid, but yet I still maintain that a lot of the solving of that problem then would be to look at everyone that's on Medicaid in a case-by-case basis and really trying to differentiate who belongs and who doesn't belong, and we could save a lot of money on file study if we found out who the leeches are in our society. Again, tell me if I'm wrong. No, no, Deb, you're right. There's a lot of potential for, number one, yes, corruption in programs like this, uh, but it, not, not only that, but errors, you know, like simple human errors that add up uh, in ways that hurt uh, the, the entire public. You know, your, your opening song that, that refers to, you know, everybody pays the cost of living. All of us pay the price for misguided government policy. And unfortunately, in the Medicaid system, there is an awful lot of opportunity that's now being missed to do things better and smarter. I'll give you one example. Okay, it, 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 the federal government's rules for Medicaid say that states can only check on eligibility, just to your point, can only check on eligibility once a year. Once a year. That's it. Not every six months, not every three months, once a year. Now, that alone, does that make sense? No. They should be able to check it on a rolling basis every day, quite honestly. Yes. We can do that. We've got technology. But states are not allowed to administer these programs according to the common sense that exists among their own people because of what the federal government has done. And that's, that doesn't make sense, and we need to change that. Absolutely. The Senate, uh, is, it, the Senate bill, even as it stands now, and of course it's going to change in various ways, but even that is something they're trying to do to move forward. Nan, with all of this haranguing uh, going on between the aisles of the Senate, uh, the Democrats, the Republicans, the House, it doesn't make any difference. This split decision from both parties is only going to push us closer to, I think, two words that are so ominous for America, and that's single-payer insurance. And then, then you and I and everybody else is going to be in a lot of trouble can somehow think, and I have many friends who are Democrats, so I'm not trying to demonize them, I'm not demonizing them, but philosophically, how anybody can think that that would work, when you look at the VA, right? I worked in the VA uh, for part of my career when I was uh, a young sprout as a doctor, and you know what? Unfortunately, the VA has some very well-meaning people, but it doesn't work. It doesn't function. And that's like our little past drive on the government being a single payer. It would be such a disaster uh, it, that we shouldn't. It, it, we should reject it out of hand. And again, that's why we need to, you know, mobilize our voters to keep telling Washington. You know, right now a lot of folks are stocking town halls with folks from the left, right, complaining right. about uh, trying to do anything to improve on <laughs> or repeal, uh, let alone, you know, repeal, replace Obamacare. Uh, they need to hear, Washington needs to hear from all the folks with common sense who know this won't work. We have a caller with a question. Caller, quickly, I'm short on time. Go ahead, please. Well, you know, every time I hear Schumer standing there, he's such a grandstanding, and my words are great for Idahoans, but they're not great for Idaho. I mean, for the radio. You can use but, the New uh, York word, but I... I what a, what a destructionist pain in the butt. And the thing of it is, yes. the thing of it is, if we don't get health care squared away, a country that's, you know, twenty trillion in debt, not accounting unfunded mandates, uh, Schumer knows this. And you say to yourself, 
when do the Democrats finally realize what is reality? Because I live in reality. Those losers don't, I don't know what they think. I guess as far as they can get away with it, they will. I'll hang up. You know, and Nan, uh, address the frustration, if you would. Here's the thing, Devin. I'm sure you've probably talked about this with your listeners. Uh, right now, the Democratic minority and Senator Schumer, whom we have to suffer with in New York, uh, but everybody, he's making the whole country suffer right now because they know that they can hold up any piece of legislation but for one type of legislation a year called reconciliation. And the American people should not have to worry about this. They shouldn't be hamstrung by process. Federal government shouldn't be controlling our health care anyway, but now because of that, then Senate process can hold us up. So so long as they can withhold legislation, stop legislation, that filibuster from getting legislation to the floor for a vote, they can hold everything over a barrel. They can hold, you know, you talk about phase one, phase two, phase three of tax reform, you'll never get to phase two or phase three. You'll never get, I mean, of health care reform, you'll never get to tax reform, and he knows it. I think Senator McConnell's going to have to break that filibuster the way they did to get the Neil Gorsuch uh, made a justice. I absolutely I agree. I don't see how we do it otherwise, quite honestly. You know, I've had another outstanding female physician on my program many, many times, Dr. Elena George, and your verbiage and hers commingle as to your thoughts and worries about uh, health care in this country. Why and did anyone ever approach you as a doctor, not as a politician, but as a doctor, and ask you and other doctors what's going to be Best fit the American health care system. Why do we leave it up to the people that wear three piece suits and wingtip shoes that sit in the halls of Congress? They don't know. Well, you're you're absolutely right, Seb. And one reason is uh, there are many reasons, and you know that's that's uh, that's worth a whole series of shows, probably. But um, you know, people get elected to Congress not because they're the talent mix we need for policy expertise, which, by the way, was why the founders. Said, and the framers of the Constitution said, you know what, the federal government should just do what the citizens and the states can't do. Health care uh, doesn't qualify as something that the citizens and the states can't do. But since we're hung up that way, most of the members of Congress, uh, and certainly on the Democratic side, but probably on the Republican side too, are either you know experienced politicians, if not career politicians, or lawyers. Uh, the, Republic, the Republicans have a lot of business people, which is great. They understand business. They understand the economy. Uh, but this is this is what we're stuck with. So we basically, you know, we have a Congress that's full of regulators. Uh, you know, they're, they're bureaucratically inclined. That's what they do. You know, there's a law for everything. So we had a, a small number of, of medical professionals in the House. We have fewer now, I believe. But when I was there, uh, you know, we had about 16 of us in the House doctor's caucus not all of us were mds and that's fine uh and we were turned to for expertise on policy uh but you know the challenge is of course that even if you have you know Zeb, you can have the best most brilliant bill in the world we could have the most brilliant plan ever and frankly there are some great plans that we've talked about but unless we have the votes to pass these things they're not going to happen yeah it's it's, it's it's out there for us to do, but people who understand. We have another caller with a question. When you hear the moo of a cow on my program, I'm Zeb at the ranch, and it gets pretty homey right here. And, uh, caller, go ahead if you would, please. Thank you. Go ahead. It's not a question. It's an analogy. It's like putting the guy who thinks chocolate milk comes from a brown cow in charge of the dairy program. It's like putting politicians right. in, in and not doctors in care of the health program. Absolutely, and I appreciate your comment, my dear. Thank you very, very much. Uh, let me ask you. The fundamental problem is that the federal government should not be in charge of our health care. Nan, if you were. But that's, you know, that's, that horse is out of the barn, if I may. Absolutely. If I may use another analogy. You know, so we've we got to get reforms passed. There are a lot of common sense reforms in the Senate bill, even as it is now even in the imperfect form that it is now. The employer mandate has put millions of Americans out of work. Let's get rid of that. Let's let Americans build up their health savings accounts. That's empowering. Zeb, just, you know, that, that people can have choices in their health care 
if they can control their own money. A health savings account lets them do that. Let's let them have tax treatment. Uh, you know, it, 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 in this case, it's in the form, of, yes, of tax uh, allowances, uh, but at least to try to even the playing field between individuals and, and big employers. Absolutely. You know, it, it, these are common sense things. Let's let states make their Medicaid programs work for the people they were intended to work for, which is those who are truly infirm. And we, we all know who those people are. You know, and unfortunately, Medicaid's ranks have swelled with millions, millions, like, I don't know, something like 27 million able-bodied people uh, are now on the roll, 74 million on Medicaid across the country. Uh, and scared to death, they're going to lose their benefits. Okay. A lot of these folks should be able to go to work again and have a job and be able to choose their health insurance. Absolutely. There are a lot of good things we can do with this bill. Nan, as the bill as the bill sits on the desk right now, we still have a rift, kind of a uh, parting of the waters in the Republican Party, to where they're not sure if they can conjure up enough votes to support it. What is the main problem, and can it be achieved with Trump standing over them with a baseball bat? Uh, <laughs> and you know, the, the president it, it is uh, very, very obviously very good at making himself clear uh, about where he thinks they need to go. And the president is right. You know, he was elected for a reason. And what we have is we have more fiscally conservative senators like Ted Cruz, like Rand Paul, saying this bill, it makes too many unwise moves that are going to cost the taxpayers money Unnecessarily, and those who come, you know, Republicans who come from bluer states, and there are several of those, uh, where there are lots and lots of folks who receive Medicaid, and culturally, that's something that's important in their states. You know, they're very concerned about uh, making sure that Medicaid doesn't somehow fail for these people. These are legit. I understand. I come from a swing district, so I do understand these concerns, and I'm very, 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 very fiscally conservative. But my constituents were not as much. As I was. So they're all trying to accommodate each other. Now, here's the thing. If we could get a bill with a broader scope that would really open up the markets, but that's not a reconciliation bill. That's the problem. So if we could get a bigger bill, then we could actually make changes that would make sense to the fiscally conservative folks and also help preserve Medicaid. Uh, for the folks who are worried about that, we could we could do a better job, but not while we're stuck in this quote unquote reconciliation bill. That's why uh, I'll, I'll go back to that that point. And the president made it himself, I think, in December, if not more recently as well. Uh, we've got to have uh, a consideration of a parliamentary maneuver by the master tactician, Senator McConnell, to make it possible to pass a bigger bill. We, we're not trying to shut Democrats out, but if they won't join us, we're going to work for the American people. They want to stick to their politics, you know, that's, they're going to be accountable for that. But we're going to get this done for the American people. Okay, Nan, I've only got about a minute and a half left, and I want you to answer this question. My other big concern about a health care bill is this. It's got to be a bill that stimulates the want of younger people to get into the medicine business and also research, or our health care system is going to go down the drain anyway. Well, you're right. Zeb, you're absolutely right. And one of the reasons that young people get shut out of uh, going into health care is that it is so expensive to go to medical school, and that's really kind of an artificial thing, too. Uh, so we could... We could also, if we can rationalize our health care system, we can also rationalize the cost of going to medical school uh, and medical training in general. And we do need to do that. I agree with you. I absolutely loved having you on the program, and I certainly hope you'll consent to coming back in the future. Dr. Nan Hayworth, former U.S. representative from New York, God bless you, and do something back there, please, to uh, get rid of Bill de Blasio. I would be honored to join you anytime. Thank you for your time and your voice. All right. God bless you, and thank you once again. Thank you so much. Really enjoyed having that lady on the phone, and she is, like I said, a former United States representative representative from the state of New York, a doctor, Nan Hayworth. What a blessing. And I'm going to keep her name and number on file and have her back. She is excellent. Thank you very much, Nan Hayworth.
Oh, my goodness, there's a lot of things happening in Oakley, and we want to thank the merchants over there for supporting Oakley Pioneer Days, including Searles at 106 North Center Street in Oakley. Oh, my goodness, gas, grub, and goodies. They're open from 6 in the morning till 9 at night. Locally grown beef and the best burgers and fries around. And I'll tell you what, they've got everything. You'll never go hungry when you stop in at Searles in Oakley. Along with our friend Scott Bedke, of course, Speaker of the House Scott Bedke, a farmer, rancher in the Oakley area, would like to invite everybody to the best celebration in Idaho, and that's the Oakley Pioneer Days, July 14th through the 22nd. Help celebrate 130 years of family Western traditions from Speaker of the House Scott Bedke. And Smith's Cafe at 135 East Main in Oakley. My goodness, they're open Monday through Saturday, 6.30 to 1 p.m., and Sunday's 11 a.m., and they make their own patties for the one-third pound burger. Have you had that? It is something delicious. And onion rings, and they've got everything to quench your thirst over at Smith's Cafe at 135 East Main in Oakley. And those are some great merchants that are saying, come on over to Oakley Pioneer Days. And that's July 14, 15, 18, 20, 21, and 22 with the motto, of course, this year, Our Pioneer Heritage Past, Present, and Future. They're going to be starting this weekend, and it's going to be ripping good fun on this Friday and Saturday for the ninth annual Bump and Rub four-cylinder car race. And they've got basketball tournaments, and they've got all kinds of great chuck wagon breakfast, great big Pioneer Day parade on the 22nd, and that's going to be at 1130 in the morning. And don't forget, as the events come closer, we're going to be highlighting and featuring each of those on our program. So much fun. So many people serving you at Oakley Pioneer Days in Oakley. Don't you miss it. Going to be great. Absolutely. We are going to take a little break for a couple of minutes, and then we're going to come back with a gentleman that's been on my program in the past. His name is Dan Perkins. He's an author and critic of what's going on in the world situation today and knows what he's talking about. So stay tuned. Wheels, we'll turn it back over to you. I'll be back in about three minutes. And now back to Zeb at the Ranch on AM 1230 KBAR. To reach Zeb, call 436-2244 or toll free 1-866-927-4587. And now, here is Zeb Bell. Uh, Thank you much and welcome back. Once again, I want to remind you the Idaho Rodeo Hall of Fame is going to have their great big weekend coming up on July 28th and 29th at the Canyon Crest Events Center. Call Katie for tickets at 733-9392. Friday night's going to be the tough enough to wear pink night, and a percentage of the proceeds goes to help breast cancer awareness with the St. Luke's Foundation. $10 entry fee. Saturday night, of course, the Hall of Fame induction, and that's going to start with 5 p.m. social hour, dinner at 6, and then the induction ceremony. And uh, tickets are 25 buckets. Be sure and contact uh, Katie at uh, 733-9392. And I've got some great big machine going by my outside window window right now and this event sponsored by d11 banks and of course tech distributing your cores dealer the idaho rodeo hall of fame for 2017 man they might as well have flown a jet in this window for heaven's sakes thank you very much right now let's go to the phone line and uh, we're going to visit with the man that is a master storyteller and author of the book called the brotherhood of the red nile trilogy dan perkins has been on our program in the past. Good morning, Dan. How are you? Good morning, Zeb. Thank you for having me on. Uh, I apologize. I had a great big piece of machinery go by my back window of the studio, and holy smokes, I thought I was being invaded, so I apologize. Uh, Dan, no your book, the, Red, the Brotherhood of the Red Nile Trilogy, uh, man, I'll tell you what, normally I wait till the end of a segment to really plug the book and where it can be purchased and what it's about and everything, but right now, with all the things that are happening around the globe, and with the Muslims uh, playing the, oh, please, apologize to us card and people like Linda Sarsour tie all this together because I'm really concerned that they're gaining power which means they're gaining control Um, great great question Um, I uh, I, the trilogy helps people begin to understand 
You know, I'll, I'll ask an embarrassing question. Uh, not that I'm trying to embarrass you or your audience, but but it's imp- it's a very important question. Zeb, if, if I asked you what percentage of your audience has read either the Quran or the Sharia law, what would you say would be the percentage? I would say less than 5%. Okay. So here we have a nation of... of, of, of not, it's not a nation per se. It is a... Um, an organization based on religion, tr- religious traditions that is absolutely out to destroy us. And yet, less than 5% of the American people, and I think you're being generous, sir, less than 5% of the American people have ever read any of the rules and the laws that govern their activity, their relationships with Christians and Jews, and governments. And yet, we're expected to try and support an, any administration, whatever it is they're trying to do, when we don't really understand who the enemy was. We knew who the enemy was in World War II. We knew it was Hitler, and it was Mussolini, and it was the Emperor Hirohito. We knew we could identify them. There's not a identifying person here in this particular kind of war. Um, and so it, it really is uh, we have, in my opinion, uh, we have leadership in our country under both parties who do not understand, along with many world leaders, do not understand the anger and the determination that these people have to destroy us. And until we understand that and face it, uh, we're going to have a problem. One of the greatest mistakes we're making as a world is we think because the coalition forces have retaken Mosul and Turkey that we've defeated the army. No, we haven't, because there are 32 other nations around the world. We haven't defeated Islam. If you looked at the film over the weekend at the capital the, of the Muslim faith in, in Syria, where this all supposedly started, it is nothing but a pile of rubble. Nobody can live there. So we we cele- supposed to celebrate that we recaptured Mosul and we did all this stuff. And in the time that we've been fighting them, they've grown to a world power, and we've yet to recognize that reality. They, the Muslims, Dan, now this is strictly my own opinion. Tell me how wrong I might be. But they, the Muslims now, led by people, i.e., like Linda Sarsour, are playing the pity card. They're playing the card of, oh, we've been picked on. Oh, we're just absolutely guilty of everything, and we're not. We're good, peace-loving people. And they're playing that apologetic card, and we're falling for it, when all the time they're looking for more control and more encroachment into our society. Am I wrong? No, but let me take you a little farther. As somebody who has studied the Quran and studied Sharia law, there is a reason, Zeb, why these enclaves are created in European nations that, that they call them no-go zones. The reason they're created is that under Sharia law and under the Quran, they are forbidden to mingle with Christians and Jews. So they're going in in France and Germany and Italy and Spain and all over, all over Ireland, England, and they're dividing the country into these enclaves. And they get larger and larger and larger. Right now, the Muslim population in France is about 10% and growing. At some number of percentage of the population, they will physically take control of France. And it'll no longer, it'll be a Muslim country. And so we don't understand that we grew up in our country with a separation of church and state. In the Muslim faith, the Quran teaches you how to live on a day-to-day basis, but also how to govern. There is no separation of church and state in under under the Muslim law. They are they are together. We are, have the wrong mental attitude. Now, I agree with what you're saying, but I would phrase it just a different way. For the longest time, the protected class in the Democratic Party were the black people of America. They have 
lost their position as a protected class. The new protected class in the Democratic Party are the Muslims. And so when you quoted all those things and all the whining that this woman did, they are they have become the victim class, which is what the Democrats always need. They need victims to go to take care of. And so the Muslim class, for two reasons, one, because they've been somewhat persecuted, but two, they're scared to death that if they come out against the Muslims, they might die. And so they're intimidating at the same time trying to be uh, a, a, a victim. On a scale of 1 to 10 right now in the, on the world stage, Dan, uh, where are we with the problem being exacerbated here in this country and around the world for the control factor that the Muslims want? I think it's much higher than what people realize because we as a nation are gullible, we're naive, and we're being force-fed a pablum from the news media of acceptance. How wrong am I? Well, I don't, I don't know that you're wrong. I would say that, the, that another way to say it is that we are probably behind some of the other nations of the world, like France and Italy and Germany, and, and, and that's really a positive because the, the Muslims have taken on such a strong uh, position. You know, in the, in the camps where they were, they were putting up the refugees because they didn't have any housing in Germany, through the fences, they were trying to intimidate the women of Germany. Through the fences, they were trying to intimidate the government. Um, so that you, you've got these immigrants that are 18 to 35 years of age, military age men, who are leaving their home country and coming to Western Europe, not for the purposes of necessarily to, we know not to assimilate, because the... the the Quran prohibits assimilation. Here it's more difficult for them to assimilate because we do have areas in our country where we stand up for the law. We also have areas like in Michigan where Sharia law is clear. I, I was one of the first reporters to expose a Sharia court. I, and I just said that a Sharia court in Irving, Texas, right outside of Dallas, Mm. I was there doing a presentation, and I was talking to about 50 businessmen, and I said to them, do you know that you have a Sharia court right here in in Arlington, Texas? Can't be. I said, yes, it's true. And when the judges were interviewed, if you're going to interpret a case, are you going to use Sharia law, or are you going to use the U.S. Constitution? And they said they would default to Sharia law. You cannot have a nation with two different sets of laws. And it creates anarchy. And so we have we have done a much better job, not a great job, but a much better job than, than Europe in trying to contain the influence of the radicals in the American uh, political system. Yeah, but Dan, when you say political system, that right there piqued my interest. Because quite frankly, I would bet that you're going to agree with me on this, is that whether it's Republican or Democrat, regardless of which side of the aisle of partisan politics, our own leaders are so naive and quite frankly ill-informed as to what the problems are and what they might become. Wouldn't you agree with that? Uh, absolutely, 100%, 1,000%. I, I just said earlier in the program, we, we, we have a, 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 a people and a government of leaders who do not understand the power and the, and the strength of the enemy. We're, we're ignorant of it. We're, we're naive. We, we, we're Pollyannish. Whatever word you want to use, we have yet to face the reality that under their religion, there are only two kinds of people, believers and infidels. And eventually, infidels either have to convert to become a believer, or they must die. Those are the choices. You know, I'd like you, because of your expertise in being a great author and spokesperson for this subject, what were your thoughts about Trump and the G20 summit? I'll tell you right now, I think he put America back where it should be as the number one in world leadership. I thought he handled himself very well, as did his entourage. What are your thoughts? Uh, I absolutely agree with you. Um, 
understand that what I've been saying for some time, we have a president, we had a president, the former president, who told the world that America's role was to lead from behind. As much as Barack Obama thought that that was the right thing to do, the chaos in the world that we have today is a result of Barack Obama saying that the U.S. government should lead from behind. What you saw in the first trip when he went to Riyadh in Saudi Arabia and, and had that presentation from all those leaders and what we heard from the G20, what's happened is that America has a leader who wants America to be out front ahead of everybody else. And the world desperately needs America. And I use this example, Zeb. When the, when the Syrians decided they were going to use the sarin gas on their people, who else other than the United States would have had the courage or the resources to step up and launch 49 Tomahawk missiles to try and destroy as much of that capability as possible? Nobody. Nobody. And if Barack Obama was still president, he wouldn't have done anything. And so what, what the trip to, uh, to the Middle East, the attack on the, on the air base in Syria, the G20 meeting, is all about Mr. Trump saying to the world, America's taking its leadership role. And I believe that the world honestly believes that if, if America is the leader, the world is a safer place. You know, I would be amiss if I didn't ask you your opinion on a subject that we weren't uh, scheduled to talk about this morning, but I'd feel honored if you'd give me your answer. North Korea, I am very scared, and I'll say that word, I'm very scared of that chubby little fat man, Kim Jong-un, and what he may do just purely to have world dominance. What are your thoughts? Uh, I agree with you. We should be. But I think that a lot of people um, are not seeing the in, the in the remember the movie The Wizard of Oz when that when when they were going into Oz and and they were met and there was a carriage being drawn by a green horse and they, and the guy said it was a horse of a different color. Mm -hmm. I think there's another thing going on that that many people in the media. And, and reporters are not focusing on, and they need to, and, and that is, we keep talking about his ballistic missile capability of bringing, shooting missiles into the United States. What we're not talking about, and I've written about many times, that, we're, that warhead can come off of that missile, it can go in a cargo container, put on a cargo ship, shipped into L.A. Harbor or San Francisco or Baltimore, Washington Harbor, or New Orleans, or any place they want to do, and detonate it right in the United States. True. They don't have to shoot it across the ocean for, for 15,000 miles. It's not, gonna, not necessary. So I'm concerned that what are we doing about trying to thwart his ability to look for alternative delivery of nuclear weapons to the United States? Um, I, I have great concern because I agree with you. As far as I can tell, this man is about himself and himself only. He doesn't care whether his people die. I don't even think he cares if he dies. He wants to go out in a blaze of glory. And we have to understand as a nation, that's what he really wants to do. Is there, in your opinion, last question, uh, Dan, is there any room left for negotiations or is it basically a chin-to-chin -chin standoff and who's going to fight first? Another great question. You ask me great questions. I appreciate that. Um, I think you have to look at it from this standpoint. Um, I don't think America morally would use nuclear weapons against him and his capabilities. I don't think that conventional weapons would destroy enough of his infrastructure, conventionally launched weapons. So I think either he's going to have to be negotiated out of power and degrading of his nuclear capabilities, or we're going to have to go in and take it apart. And that could cost a lot of lives. Um, it is a very difficult situation when you're dealing with an irrational person about what needs to be done. But I, I have great concern that 
we need to focus on the fact that he can have multiple delivery of those weapons to the United States, not just missiles. Absolutely. I have the highest respect for this man as a guest, and he's the author of the Brotherhood of the Red Nile Trilogy, and we're going to have him back. You can bet on it. Dan Perkins, God bless you, man, and thank you so much for your time this morning. You're welcome. Thank you for having me on. It's always a pleasure. Thank you, sir. I really enjoy that man and his uh, outlook as to what's happening and what needs to happen. Dan Perkins, a former registered investment advisor and a great author of that book, again, The Brotherhood of the Red Nile, Dan Perkins. Excellent book. Excellent. Uh, weather forecast, got to get that on, and uh, it's brought to you this hour by Scarrow's Meats, 331 North Road, Jerome. We had Don Scarrow on the program with us the other day. Oh, my goodness, they've got all the delicious retail meats over there at their location at 331 North Road, Jerome. Call them at uh, 324-7657 or go to their website, scarrowsmeats.com. Mm-mm, delicious. They've got everything, the breakfast sausages the bratwurst oh my and they've got that new buckboard bacon it's leaner and more economical than traditional bacon with several several different flavors you're gonna love it here now is gina with the weather it's going to be another warm one as we kick off another work week plus we are in a red flag warning that means no burning as we do have tender dry conditions out there today. Looking at sunny skies, high of 92. We do have a slight chance of some afternoon rain, showers, or thunderstorms. Winds out of the west right around 10 to 25 miles an hour for tonight. Looking at clear skies, low 56 tomorrow. Sunny skies cooling off to 89 if you consider that a cool off. Looking at an overnight low of 55. Then for Wednesday, sunny skies in 92. That's your weather. I'm looking forward to it, Gina. Thank you very much. And the weather brought to you by Scarrow's Meats. Mm -mm. I'll tell you what, I talked to Don the other day and I said on the radio, got to get over there or he's got to come over here. And when he comes, I hope he brings some of that breakfast bratwurst. (laughs) Oh, I love that. Scarrow's Meats, 331 North Road, Jerome. The number to call, 324-7657. They are changing the way we eat one delicious bite at a time. Good morning morning caller thank you you're on the air good morning before you go away uh isn't de blasio a wretched member of the communist party uh, i don't have proof of that right here in front of me and i will not say anything until i have proof i don't speculate but what i am going to say he's a common low life that absolutely is not representing his state nor his city new york city with the professionalism that it deserves this man is absolutely a cancer when he puts the uh, lives of his policemen in lesser accord than he does the protesters at a G20 summit. This man needs to be replaced. Yeah. If if he is a communist, what are the, all these people in New York that voted for him? Well, again, that's speculation, but I'm telling you what, the man needs to be impeached, he needs to be thrown out of office, and if not, at the next election, he needs to be humbly embarrassed because of his lack of being professional at his job. Well, when you uh, go into an office like mayor of a large city like that, don't you have to justify that you're a good standing member of the United States and and that you will follow all the laws and all the regulations of the United States. Well, believe me, some of the people that have run for various offices, let alone, i.e., New York City mayor, you question sometimes if they weren't looking at people that were sitting in the audience at the Howdy Doody show. Uh, I absolutely have nothing good to say about Bill de Blasio, and he is a reference point of what's wrong with America today. And uh, kind of a gimme, gimme, take society, and Bill de Blasio absolutely does not deserve to be even considered to be the dog catcher. This man is despicable and should be run out of office. Okay, one more quick question before I go. Who is the leader in California, I mean, that that is so adamantly against this, besides Maxine Waters? Against what, Keith? What's that? I said against what, quickly. 
you know, against America. Well, you know, there's there's everybody from the governor, Jerry Brown, that's very, very far left, kind of la-la left. And, and you've got so many of their House of Representatives and everything that want to gimme, 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 take, take, take society. And then they wonder why they're fiscally insolvent right now and looking to the federal government, which is basically you and me, to help give them a handout financially to become solvent again for a short period of time. Baloney. Uh, there's another word I wanted to use, but I can't on the radio. Keith, I got to run. Thank you very much for your call. I appreciate it, buddy. Thanks. Yes, have a good day. All right, sir. Got to tell everybody about our major sponsor before I run out of time, and that's, of course, our Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. They are the best. They really know tires, and that's not just a kind of a wide statement. That really kind of centers in because they know all the tread designs. They know everything about these various tires as to what's going to best befit your type of driving. Mm -hmm. Whether it's for your pickup, your SUV, your car, whatever, your trailers, they can and they will find the right tire for you. And don't forget, too, they've got the best in brake service. I mean that. The best with highly trained technicians that know brakes for your safety. And front end alignment, shocks and struts and batteries, all of this. But above all, again, I always keep coming back to this one word, service. They really serve you. Lane and Rupert, Dave on Blue Lakes and Twin, Mike and Buell, Mike and Jerome, the Twist family and Paul, Daniel on Pole Line and Twin Falls, and Randy on Overland and Burley, seven great locations of your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers serving you stop in and see them today man we got a full program tomorrow and uh, i can't wait uh, to get some of these guests on the air and talk to them about the various subjects etc and uh, i hope you'll tune in and we start at 806 right here on kbar 12 30 a.m and then streaming live on the internet all over the world zebbell.com and thanks to all of our internet audience and all their kind very kind emails appreciate that and uh, we always end the program by by saying the way things were are the way things ought to be. God bless you and your family. We'll see you tomorrow at 8.06.